Welcome back to another episode of the Red Wagon Inn. So excited for tonight's episode. We have a lot planned. And you might notice we have a bit of a different face with us tonight. Right down about there for me, we have the lovely Sappy Chan joining us as our guest star for tonight. Yay, round of applause for Sappy. So glad to have her on here. And let's just fill everybody's audio with applause so that everybody wants to leave and then it's not fun for anyone at all. <laughs> Bree is uh, helping some stuff with her little one, so she is going to be out for tonight. And Safi, on very, very short notice, agreed to join us. And so what a trooper she is uh, and b being able to make a character and art so quickly. Super very excited for Safi to join us, especially for what we have planned with Everybody's best friend, Castagon. It's going to be a great session all around, and only good things and flowers can exist in this world. Glad to have everybody back with us tonight. Uh, anybody have anything they need to plug before I get plugging stuff for everyone? I swear we're not doing a salesman episode like last time, though we do have <coughs> Castagon here, and a little bit will happen. Anybody have Four any plugs three. they need to pull in? Beautiful. Such an agreeable group. <laughs> right. So uh, let's talk first things. First things first, we have some art to show off, one of which was done by one of our two artists we have down below us because we have many artists. Uh, the first one is by Jakey, uh, and it is salt with his little magical feather of revival there that he's pulled off of the burning log. And it's just so pretty, Jakey. Another uh, fun fact about that one. That was another collaboration. Oh, look at all this Saffy, collaboration. Safi did the sketch and Jakey finished yeah. it. Ooh, it was a fun time. Really? I didn't know that it was, it was like a you time. start. He, oh, that's, that's yeah, dope. it was a it was a crossover episode. We have these other mm. shows, Ryan, that are all about RWI <laughs> that you, you may not know about. You mean the one I was on on Sunday where we got to make. Oh, no, the art didn't come up where we got to make <laughs> Kina. <laughs> <laughs> where we got to make the ripped boy Keenak, uh, which during that Red Wagon in stream, Safi, uh, didn't we establish that he is essentially Billy from Stranger Things? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's Max's mm -hmm. brother, Billy from Stranger Things. Misunderstood. <laughs> He's really a good guy. We even <laughs> changed it up instead of just like the typical fin that a lizard folk gets. He has like two going down, so it looks more like 80s feathered hair look, uh, and that's canon now to make him the 80s bully character that he is even <laughs> though again y'all definitely could have been on his side i'm just saying uh, you know it's up to y'all <laughs> right uh the other thing that we have for tonight uh is a giveaway the rainbow set of endless metal dice from kakapopo tcg that is going to be the first giveaway that we do tonight and it is absolutely and it's already live. gorgeous it's already live drew explain to him how they entered that giveaway exclamation mark lud and you gotta follow the channel and it's that easy. Oh. For free? <laughs> For free? The new channel? Uh, Whoa. Oh boy. Uh, oh I boy. see people putting exclamation mark LUD. However, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything happening, and we might be in trouble. <laughs> okay, Drew will fix while done? we work on this. <laughs> yeah. Emergency done, text Drew? to Bree. Like you get the Bree bat signal out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bree! Free. Free, I don't know what I'm doing. The giveaway started. But it's just a happening. picture of a top hat with a penguin out of it <laughs> up in the sky like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that is the first giveaway that we're doing tonight. But the second giveaway, which I'm very excited about, is after the first half, oh. we're going to have a... I guess kind of an open-ended one where Jakey did his talents uh, of he drew uh, someone and gave them kind of a commission like that. I'm going to do one for this one. For the second half, whoever wins that giveaway, I'm going to message them and we're going to talk back and forth to get them as an NPC and possible reoccurring character, villain, whoever they want to be on the show. So if you want to be Ooh. the evil lord who rips salt in half with a single blow, hey, we'll make that happen. That's for you. If you really hey, hate what the fuck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> or if you want to be Hannah Banana, the banana salesman from the Savannah, uh. we can also make that happen. So if you want to enter that one at the second half, that's going to be uh, really fun, and I'm going to work with you on that one. Uh, I don't know if we'll do art or not on that one. It depends the level of the character. If you're going to be like a recurring bad guy, then possibly. But yeah, if you're an orange salesman, then we may just have you be an orange salesman whose cart they knock over with their seven horses that they have in town. So we'll make that happen. We can even make you one of the custom classes from the uh, homebrew stuff that we've been working on. So that would be a lot of fun as well. I'm not going to reveal to you all Safi's character 
and her face, because we have that. She's made the art for it. Again, very, very quickly. Very awesome. Uh, we'll reveal that when her character exists live. Today, I'm going to be playing Summer for at least a while, uh, as obviously, you know, I can pull it off. Uh, I, I sound just like her. Uh, 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 get salt, the clips ready, guys. Salt, bro. You're my bro. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm just going to do Jesus. the worst what Summer What happens to impression. your voice? You're sounding a bit throaty today. Ah. But I'm actually a bit froggy. <laughs> yes bro uh for i am your sister that is i am summer and uh, sorry uh, the, you sound more like order really that yeah exactly <laughs> right um we have a few other things we want to be able to plug uh again we're still playing for the wildfire relief fund for the red cross that's down at the very bottom left there so if you haven't entered that one please do so as well another timer that's going to be uh showing up on the right side of the screen is at least the American, the national uh, hotline for substance abuse help. Want to make sure uh, if people need that resource, it's there. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff with that uh, on some friends recently, and I just think it's an important resource for people to be able to have. Uh, it's it, it's awful, and it corrupts a lot of people in a bad way, and I hope that if you ever need help, you reach out and get that for you. Uh, it's, it's really near and dear to me, and so... Uh, Please, if you're not going to do it for you, do it for me. I hope that you uh, get the help that you need if you need it. But with that, is there anything else that we need to do before we get started uh, and continue right where we left off? Safi, I will tell you, and it will be very apparent when you come in. We need Bree. <laughs> <laughs> she's working on it, Drew. Oh, she's working on it? Thank you, Bree. I, can I need see, you to teach me. I can see Drew just at Brie, at Brie. What the, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I literally very... have everything set up like it should. It's just, uh -huh. it's not working. <laughs> How dare you, you stand where she again, stood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that one. Right. Um, also, I can promise Bobo's 10 GFYs that he got will come into play this episode. Uh, as that has been a recurring wonder when that happens. You can look oh, for cool, it. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Going to kill off uh, the, the one shot character? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Safi. Like it had to happen to you. Happen. Had to happen to you, but you know. Right. <laughs> Happy Transgender Awareness Week. I did not know that was this week. That is my ignorance. Happy Transgender Ooh. Awareness Week. Ooh, go Transgender Awareness Week. Right. Anything else before we get started? Beautiful. Thanks for joining us, Safi. Everybody grab a drink, pull up a chair, and come hang out with us at the Red Wagon Inn, where we left off last time. All of the characters had just come back. It is currently the night of the Hallow Festival still. Uh, there's lots of music to be heard outside of the inn. You're currently on the very uh, bottom floor, the tavern floor of the Red Wagon Inn. You're not alone. <laughs> uh, from the distant sounds of the music and the few uh, orange and purple lights that you can see coming out of the window, you can see uh, the uh, lanterns uh, and the candles off on the window sills that are slowly illuminating the room where, um, God, uh, Sophia is standing there with her magic holding Castagon down. With that, I need to see everybody to do a roll and see who's doing the recap to explain what happened last time. You're doing a wonderful job. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I don't have to do one, do I? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Sappy, you whatever do, you say is canon. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> no, you don't have to do it. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. I mean, I, that'd be amazing. I'd love to hear cross, Sappy recap. Someone's dice, curse someone's dice, curse someone's dice, curse someone's dice. You're going to meet me today. What'd you get, Drew? I got a 13. Jackie. I'm one. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. Yes, I got a two! I got a two! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Jakey, with your fingerless gloves, did you pull the heart of the cards there for that to happen? <laughs> I really believed in the heart of the cards. I looked down into myself, and I let the dice decide. <laughs> Jackie, you've activated his trap card. All right, recap goes to Jackie. I, uh, I I didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh growing up, so I think I'm gonna you know automatically fail at this. Um, I do have some notes, however. So oh, good, good. I will if read them. If they're not Yu-Gi-Oh themed, I can't promise anything. But you know. Ah. Uh, oh, I don't know. Nope, that's not. Nope, nope, nope. There. there that's I it. choose <laughs> you, Yu-Gi-Oh monster. <laughs> <laughs> the first line of the recap: We stole the sun spear. Oh crap! Wrong recap. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Right, 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 right. right, right. So my first bullet point I have is Gideon uses two inspo. 
uh, just to roll two number twos. <laughs> hmm. Just like <laughs> and, tonight. And uh, you got blighted with 88. However, uh, you were healed a bunch of times. Oh, sorry, just preface this. We opened up with continuation of the um, Hollow's Eve battle uh, in the area with the tents and a big-ass pumpkin, and we are opening up into battle again. So... Gideon had to use two info only to get roll two twos again. Eight d8s. He was healed a bunch of times. However, didn't get downed. There were some really close calls though. Uh, and the big ass pumpkin, psychic radiant and fire damage did not work. However, lightning damage does work. And so uh, we were beating that pumpkin up. Although um, Bree had to do a lot of uh, trial and error when it came to finding out what damage the pumpkin could and could not do. So Bree took a lot of those hits for us using a lot of her. Um, Spell slots up. Thanks, Bree. <laughs> Thanks, Bree. <laughs> Thanks, Bree. And um, so, in the end, we beat all the baddies. We were uh, going through the tents when we did realize that we did not have Ada with us, unfortunately. Um, so, after some uh, lots of searching, and thanks to Gideon having um, locate object, we were able to find Ada's collar buried. Um, few hundred feet away um Ada scholar but no Ada unfortunately and so um we ventured back to town where we were given looks by the guards for saying hey how come you haven't come back you know the celebrations happened in all one we we're like don't please don't you don't know what we've gone through just stop just stop um and I just forgot to preface this but we did end up finding a book in a tent um, that said, now his path is bright for his harvest will be great. Ballas Farthing, as a quote. So we're going to hold on to that in this book that was written in blood. And by the look of the blood, it was fresh, as in the bodies that were around us, uh, probably their blood. And so we also found Terar Grimlight, uh, I, uh, some kind of, like, a That So Raven scene popped into someone's head. I forgot whose head. Uh, cut into his hand, and he wrote in the blood, using headless bodies to write in the book. And then the only note I have left is we went back to town, and there's a guy named, a drown named Castigon, who we don't trust, because he has Castigon. three badges. I mean, we don't trust. I love the idea that, like, okay, we're done with the yada yada, there's a drow, we're currently hold personing him. Uh... <laughs> Some other stuff happens. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to definitely give you a inspo for the uh, specific naming and the saying for it. However, you yada yada the second half. I'll let chat decide if you deserve the inspo or not. I'm happy to give it to you. But and while chat is doing that, like she, let... she cares oh. about the combat, right? True. Yeah. Yeah. This is true. 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 <laughs> combat in the loop. I would like to let chat know it's not my fault the giveaway is broke. It's glitching out, and Bree is working on it. I don't uh, know. As Drew's boss, I'm happy to claim it's Drew's fault. Drew's fault. Everybody? Can we get a Drew's, <laughs> Drew's fault in the chat? That'd be great. I would love that. <laughs> Hashtag Drew's fault. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag Drew's fault. I'm seeing inspo for I'll you, Jackie. I'm no happy to inspo. get it to you. The no <laughs> inspo. <laughs> happy to what, give you, you the inspo, inspo Jackie. What, you want inspo for not working? <laughs> I'm seeing, if I'm counting wrong, I think it's a 7 to 5 4 inspo. Inspo it is. I like it. 7 to 5 4. Brief uh, explanation on the yada yada. Uh, <laughs> they went back Thanks to the uh, festival. Jackie did a DOS boot challenge where uh, she didn't quite make it. Yeah, you forgot your own DOS boot challenge. I was too drunk to write that down, apparently, I guess. You know what? Such a role player. So, Rounds oh, of applause. So Good job, Jackie. Wow, such a role player. <laughs> we in round of applause day, are we? Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, I have a thing and I stick with it for one day and that's it. <laughs> As uh, you all were there in the festival, Salt was gathering a bunch of candy, but he also, uh, he and Summer noticed some undead or unwilling that were performing traditional undead for that area music, which was very mariachi, and they had paint that was very reminiscent of Day of the Dead, Coco-esque uh, stuff, more Day of the Dead. Um, and then when they went over there, they were playing fanciful music, and there was a drow there with them singing in a very cigarette-heavy voice uh, that decided to, uh, or that they talked to, and were like, oh yeah, we're in the guild, and he's like, yo, 
I got pins too. And Salt was like, best friend, come here, let's hang out. And everybody else was kind of freaked out by three pins because they all only have one single. <laughs> also, I'm seeing Drew's face with all the hashtag Drew's fault, and I love it. <laughs> It's my favorite. <laughs> they all took him back to the inn, uh, and while they were sitting there eating, because Gideon prepared a feast that he was holding with his time cleric magic, which was awesome, by the way, uh, as they got back, a feast appeared, and team said, hey, are they supposed to have three pins, Sophia? And she's like, absolutely not. He has a copper, a silver, and a gold one. That's strange, and so... Drew goes to the door, very bouncy. Uh, oh, Drew, you're getting Drew's a cutie. There you go. <laughs> uh, Drew went to the door, very bouncy, standing there kind of like, hey, buddy, how's it going? Before Sophia, whoosh, uh, casted a bit of hold magic as a bright purple ring of light and a pentagon surrounds Castagon, holding him steady there. And that's where we're going to continue off. Everybody good to go? Giveaways up. Giveaways up. Giveaways Marie up. is a miracle worker. Pew, pew, pew. Go, go I don't Marie. know how she fixed it. But Private I got message it from, from Bree. Bree. It was Drew's fault. Got it. Until the next one. <laughs> and then I'll break that one too. Oh, I love it. If you haven't done so, make or if you did before, make sure you still do your exclamation point LUD. That way you can still be entered into it. Did, mm -hmm. Right. There was one thing with uh, where we were. Didn't Gideon just pat down the dude because I saw the big gem thing and then the patches? You did. Uh, as okay. that's, yeah, that's where we're going to continue off. Um, so as uh, we ended last time, uh, the scene as described before, there's still the festival going on outside, but it's only you all and Sophia currently in the inn with the food surrounding all of you. Castagon just having drunk straight from a white gravy boat uh, for pepper gravy, since people don't know what white gravy is. Uh, he's currently held by the hold person magic as you've patted him down. You kind of pulled open his uh, vestments there. Again, he is in very vagrant s clothing. Most of his shirts and pants are kind of torn and ripped pretty much all over. He looks like he can barely afford the clothes that he has on his back uh, as he is pretty much entirely skin and bone with his kind of blackish green hair. It's more black with a green hue that he has on it. Oh, we know what white gravy is. I hate you, Will. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, uh, as... what's white gravy? Pepper gravy, Alex. Pepper gravy. Pepper gravy. <laughs> it's got it's got bits of pork in it and it's you put bits it over... Don't say it's oh, got sorry. bits of pork in it when we're just... <laughs> <laughs> right, so, um, huh. Castagon, uh, you, you pat him up and pull open his vest there that he's got three pins, a gold, a silver, and a copper, as well as, as you pull the vest open, he's got a really large amulet. Uh, again, since we were talking Yu-Gi-Oh, it's very, uh, like, not the Millennium Pendant, but the other one that almost looks like a dream catcher that's gold all around with five gems circling around it in various colors uh, as you pat him down and he looks back up at you and says, hey, ho, 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 don't, <clears throat> just let me, let me out of here, don't touch that, that's mine, I have a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Yeah, guys, hear him out, hear him out. Thank you, little rat one, he, he seems to know what he's doing, is he the leader of your group? I'd listen to him. I pull out one more arrow, and now there's four. I <laughs> personally think those shots are gonna go wide when you load that many on a bit, but uh, let's not test it, let's, uh, Instead, let me go, and we can talk. There's so many of you. I'm not going anywhere. Well, she has asked you a question of where you got the pins. You have not yet to answer. I, look, it's kind of a personal thing. I don't ask you where you got your four arrows You can from. either answer the question or I can shoot you. It's very simple. Team, this is not how we treat friends. He's no friend of mine, Salt. He's a friend of mine, and if you're a friend of mine, then he's a, fr he's a friend of yours, too. Hey, yeah, yeah, listen we'll to him. him. Listen to the little rat. He's he's smart. You he's... will either answer her, or I will shoot you. Okay. All right. Now, if I tell you the honest truth, then you can't shoot me, regardless of what I tell you, right? Yes, I will not shoot you. But I will... <laughs> and I'll leave it there. I will not shoot you. He looks over to Sophia, who the ring kind of tightens around him as he's like, ah! as she's like, I uh, make no such promises. I started with his voice and had to change it there. <laughs> I, I make no such promises uh, as he's like, ah. all right, all right. Um, <clears throat> so the 
the top one, the gold one. That's it's from an old buddy of mine. We we go pretty far back. He passed away, and I took his as a memento. Nobody else is using it, and I thought it would be fine for me to use it. You know, I I didn't really think it was that big a deal. If if you think it's that big a deal, I'm, I, maybe I can take it off. But I, it's kind of a family heirloom. You know, no, don't take my pin. That's that's my pin. Uh, it's a friend of mine. Don't take it. Don't take it. The other two. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I won the silver one in a bet. That was <laughs> that's a. Sometimes you, you when people run out of money, they put other valuables up. You know, it's fine. I earned it. It's mine. Uh, and then the bronze one, I tried to join a while back, and I, it, you know, it just wasn't for me. I got the pin, but I just don't do anything with it. It might as well not. Be. It, the the bronze one's mine. See, he's a member of the Red Wagon Inn. I'm gonna Can look I? up at uh, Sophia. Sophia, kind of holding the magic still in her hand, says, Get. Grab the gold and the silver one. Hey, grab them all. Place them on the table. Before Cease. I grab them, can I just do an insight check on this fellow? I just want to see if there's any points where his, like. Because Gideon's face to face with him. I want to see if there's anything he says where his eyes dart away, or. Because I can tell he's nervous, but I want to see if where he's intentionally avoiding my eye contact. Yeah, roll an insight for that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, uh so oh could I I guess I didn't say guidance, so it's fine. Um do, 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 do. insight is plus seven, so that's a twenty-two. Twenty-two, go clerics. He seems to be telling you the truth. It that doesn't appear to be his main worry, though. That his conversation with you seems to almost be like an afterthought. Like he's not really paying much attention to the words that he's throwing out there. But he doesn't seem like he's spouting lies. It's not how we treat friends. <laughs> Thank you, God. We. Oh. I thought we were. I thought we were gonna drink together. Uh, to drink together. God, I won't bring any friends back ever again. I'm sorry, Castagon. I'm gonna take the pins now at this point and just start laying them out in front of uh, the bar. As you I go over to my grab my arrows. Oh, sorry. I was just saying I'm putting my arrows back and I'm grabbing out the scythe. Okay. Sounds good. I didn't good. say I wouldn't attack with the scythe. You pull the scythe out. As, as he's, he kind of gives you the, come on, look. <laughs> as you swap the arrows away and pull, he's like, mm, that's something I would do. But uh, then, Jakey, you go over and pull his vest open to grab the other ones. Uh, as you move your hand closer, he kind of like freaks out for a second. He's like, hey, careful, careful. Just touch the pins what happens if i touch this and i put my hand close to those gems so he's like I... hey, that that's mine that's my amulet who kn who knows what could happen if somebody else tries to use it in which case I'm gonna... summer is going to come over and be like this little it's just an amulet it no Salt, summer's on our on. side summer Summer, like, from last session, Ryan, mm -hmm. Summer was definitely on Castagon's side. Yeah, no, I know. That's why she's like, it's just an amulet. Come oh. on. Mm. Trying to, like, say, like, don't worry about it. I'm going to step up and use my tail to pick up the three pins before Gideon does anything he shouldn't be doing. Gideon, you're about to pull them off. Salt goes over there. Uh, if you see Salt coming over, you know kind of what Salt does. Salt, if you're trying to do it before he can, I need a sleight of hand. For sure. Alrighty. First roll of the day. 9 plus 17 is 26. 26. Uh, Gideon, you can roll an opposed sleight of hand. I mean, for kits and shigs, why not? But yeah, I don't you think could always I, crit. I have a plus one, so... Uh, I mean, I did get a 19. Oh, but really? Wow. 20 total. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you go to un you undo the back parts of each of the pins, uh, allowing them to sit loosely as Salt's tail swipes up from the front and grabs the three pins. Uh, and then kind of in your shock, his hand grabs the uh, back parts of the pins uh, out of your hand quickly before he hops off and runs kind of to the table away. Puts him on the table. As he's like, okay, okay. Now, if he's got the pins... You can look at them. That that I'm legitimate. I am a legitimate operation. I'm not. I'm not here to lie to you. you can, go ahead, take a look at the pens. It's totally fine. I'll obviously I'll be right here. As Summer comes over back behind Castagon uh, and says, 
look, I'll make sure that nobody takes your amulet. Trying to be helpful, uh, as Castigon says, wait, no, 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 as uh, Summer is going to grab the back of it, trying to take it off of him, not touching the jewels. And as soon as Summer does that, Summer suddenly <laughs> disappears into a rainbow puff of colors before... A rainbow smoke appears where Summer once stood. As Castigon right. stops. <clears throat> Did is she there? Did she touch the amulet? I heard something. You just hear a thud of the bottom of the scythe on the ground, and then it's raised right next to his neck. He's, uh, God, I told you not to touch. What are you doing with me? <laughs> as you pull, you kind of pull the scythe a little closer to him. I warned you not to. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> as you kind of pull it, it gets like t- tighter and sharper on his neck, and he kind of stops talking for but a moment. Everyone. When he's what? Up- what do you do, my friend? <laughs> She's still drunk. The oh. second he stops talking, Gideon yells, Intimidation tactic! Winds up and kicks him scr- straight in the balls. <laughs> Gideon, I think that. everybody's ready at their throats. I think Gideon is just like, yeah, this is the vibe, right? And Gideon entirely misreads the situation and kicks him as hard as he can. You Suddenly, get my, friend's gone. my friend's gone and that's what you get. And he is like, what do you do with my friend? Intimidation! Boom. That's what you get. <laughs> All in the span of like two seconds, his team pulls the scythe closer. Gideon, roll to hit first. <laughs> that's, not, that's not your purse. <laughs> that's my first nat 20 of tonight. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. The logo. Look at this. Look at it pretty. Wait. Oh my god. Drew's pretty little logo. Oh no. Oh no. Why are you the way that you are? (laughs) That's my purse. (laughs) That's my purse. purse. I don't know you. (laughs) Right. Okay. Uh, Now, roll an intimidation at advantage. Uh oh, I have negative charisma, but you can do strength so... on that if you want instead. I have negative strength as okay, well. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, uh, with my negative intimidation, that's still a sixteen. Okay, sounds good. Uh, hold on, I have to roll a con save. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nothing burst <laughs> at the very <laughs> least. <laughs> hey, hey, Ryan. Yes, salt. In this craziness happening right now, yeah, Salt's gonna run up, and before even realizing what's happening, the tail's gonna touch the amulet where Summer touched it. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, all right, Salt, as you touch the amulet, you feel cold, cold, almost like a magical cold as you touch this. Your tail wraps underneath the chain, right where Summer touched. And you hear a voice in your head that just says, Where do you want to go? Summer. Where do you want to go? It replies. To my sister. Where do you want to go? It replies as this is happening. This this is about when uh, Gideon crushes <laughs> crushes the uh, gonads of Castagon uh, as uh, as he replies ah, ah, before like the scythe pulls him back almost like a chokehold as Sophia even is kind of like huh. <laughs> um uh, where where did the rattling go go as y'all are just maiming this guy. <laughs> Uh, as he get in his standing like he did the right thing like <laughs> so he's like oh my god mm-hmm. take my side. take your boot off my ass. <laughs> Gideon how do you take your boot off of his nether regions is it more of a pull away or more of a scrape away like you got gum on your feet 
I think like Gideon wow. did the whole like wind up kick and like if with it's a nat twenty, I think he lifted him a little bit and then like just dropped his leg back. So it was one of those where Gideon's not very strong, but I think just the velocity Gideon got was what <laughs> did most of the work for him. He's currently sitting in a chair, so you're you're it's like a downward oh, a kick. Chair? Yeah, because he's <laughs> so it's like a downward squish. I so... think I kicked through the bottom of the seat then, because that's even funnier <laughs> to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll say this like uh, <laughs> this wooden old chair that probably once was very well made, uh, but has seen quite a few bit, <laughs> quite a lot of use. Uh, and <laughs> as such, your boot more from the heaviness of uh, the <laughs> kind of metal underneath your boot than it is any actual strength coming from you breaks the wood on the front of the chair, causing the chair itself to collapse. However, he is held in the hold person, and so he is still stuck in the sitting position as you slam onto him. As he's like, ah, 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 we'll say then, yeah, he's like, get your foot off me, ah, as you pull your boot uh, away uh, and out of his crotchal region, as then he is like, eh, this is what you deserve. <laughs> Before Salt, you again here. Where do you want to go? And I'm going to, even though Verity just said something that I hope you haven't read, but I'm going to say my sister again. Where do you want to go? So you continue to hear this for quite Where a while. Where would summer go? Where would... Team, you're sitting uh, there holding the scythe. Zinnia? Gideon, what are you doing? Um, I think Gideon, like, doing that, like, was proud for a quick second, and then notices is probably the only one on his side that he just, like, can this dude, and mm. he's like, hmm. And so Gideon's gonna sit, like, a little ways back, just as backup support, being like, maybe, maybe interrogation isn't my thing. <laughs> Uh, I was, I was gonna say, with Team with the scythe up against his neck, he does look at Gideon with a a slightly concerned look of that was intimidating. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, Zania will probably reach for something. She's like, she'll finally read the room, and then, she oh, and she's gonna take out the hand axe that she's got from um the tent area because mm -hmm. she's still fumbling with her long spear so all she can hold is the smaller hand axe and she's going to try to just stand above and point at him in the face like you, looking at her friends like mm, this is what I should be doing you kind of like lean back and forth mm -hmm. you don't really feel like you are but everyone else sees you kind of leaning yeah. to and fro yeah. uh, as yeah. Castagons uh, you have no idea how bad I want to cut my balls Right now. <laughs> <gasps> Salt yells out in the room, Home! Where do you want to go? Do you speak English? Oh, sorry, common? <laughs> it replies back, Where do you want to go? Where did my sister go? Where do you want to go? Where do you want me to go? <laughs> Wherever you want to go. Done. <laughs> you say done, and the room is silent. As all of you see Salt sitting there like, Where do you want me to go? Done. Just kind of looking at this as his tail is holding the... Amulet just kind of up off of his neck just uh. a little bit before Sophia is like, speak about the rattling or or he'll do it again. As she kind of le aims towards you, Gideon. Possibly writing a check you don't wish to cash. As he's... Uh, uh, she... Uh, is it... Uh, it's an amulet of planar <laughs> travel. Uh, she... She used my... She used my... She used my primer... Had it primed, ready to go. <clears throat> to and, where? Uh, the Fae, Fae Wild. Uh, <clears throat> Fae Wild. Mm, mm. Fae oh, Wild! Oh. Before, Salt, I need you to roll an intelligence check. Oh, that's 16 plus 5 is 21. 21? Fantastic. But I'm actually very smart, but just young and dumb. 
Right. I'm going to need you to roll a percentile. Ah, oh, I don't think I've rolled one of those in this game. I'll use Summer's Dice. Mm, good call. Three, zero, zero, 30. Ryan, please. What'd you say? I'm just saying, Ryan, please. <laughs> What'd you get? Salt is a good boy. 30. 30. Beautiful. Right. So, Salt, you and every creature within 15 feet of you, which would be everyone except Sophia, as she is still kind of in the distance behind the bar, and team, you have walked up with the scythe. Zania, you are there with the axe, and Gideon, you are sitting down. Everyone within 15 feet of you, that includes Castagon, are suddenly whoosh, pulled into a rainbow vortex. Very much like a Harry Potter flit going from one location to another. You see a myriad of colors, some that you don't think you've ever invented before, or seen before, not invented. I get you, you can invent whatever colors oh, you want. Oh, we've got that one down so, under for sure. Yeah, yeah, that one's down under. Some that you've never seen before as you whoosh, fly through a myriad of colors before casting on, ah, just kind of screams out and you hear nothing before suddenly you all land in a huge clearing of a forest. You fall maybe about 20 feet from the sky, not enough to damage yourself as you fall into what could be only described as the largest elephant ear uh, leaves on trees that you could ever imagine. You kind of roll off. It's very Avatar from the movie where you kind of roll off before you fall into a large bush onto the ground. Trees that span like the trees of Endor that seem to go for miles up and possibly as big as a building around around you. The air in itself is so thick and humid and just not at all comfortable for where any of you have ever been before. However, as you're falling, some of you, this is going to be a luck roll. I need a d20 from everyone. Oh, dear. Ooh. GM, yes. I just have a quick question about how luck works mm -hmm. uh, by your standards. Uh, hey. This is golf <laughs> rolls, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to get a hole in one, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, rad. <laughs> Did you get a hole in one? Beautiful. I got an absolute hole in one, an eagle, some might say, in golf. Jackie? Seven. Team? Uh, Fifteen. Salt? Ten. So, Gideon and Castagon, with his four, fall off of their respective really, really large leaves as they roll off. However, what they roll off into is a berry bush. Berry bushes often have thorns to defend themselves against predators. Uh, and as such, purely for twig and berries joke, Castagon follows twig and berries first, or falls <laughs> twig and berries first, as this is now a cartoon show where everything just happens to Castagon in the wrong location. As he falls, slides, legs wide open, ah, the spell no longer affecting him since he is no longer on the plane where the person was casting the spells. He slides down into the bushes. He is going to take some damage. Gideon, you are also going to take a bit of thorny damage. Not a whole lot, just two piercing damage as you fall into this berry bush. Where, as a pause, Safi, your character, out in the forest of the Feywild, was recently gathering berries for a nice treat. When suddenly... You see a puff of poof, rainbow smoke as you see five creatures fall ah, poof, as they land on some of the large elephant ears, sliding off two of them, falling directly on your berry bush where you were planning to grab some food. Can you describe Blossom for me? Um, so Blossom is like a three foot halfling who's got slightly darker skin with um, brown hair that kind of at the bottom fades up to a like a from a like a red at the bottom it fades up like she's dyed it with berries um and she's just got twigs everywhere in her hair she's got like dirt marks all over her and she's just yeah she's wearing a cute little green cape that has little oh. leaves all over it and she's got blossoms in her hair and stuff and so she there she is <laughs> that is the cutest thing i've ever seen in my life right it is absolutely adorable and it's a problem <laughs> As Gideon, you land into a pile of thorns 
As well as Castigon landing seat first into the pile of thorns, as uh, Blossom, they land right on the berries that you are planning on picking uh, as you hear two of them ah, kind of scream out in pain as Gideon also, uh, in trouble, land right in front of you. The only good one today! What are you guys doing? Uh, Where did you come from? Uh, the drow seems to roll over in pain in front of you. I made new friends. And they led me here, and everything hurts, and I think I have a thorn in my bum. Zinnia's gonna stumble and throw up a little bit. Mama! (laughs) Zinnia, roll me a con save. Eleven. Eleven. Blossom, as you say, like, these these were the only good ones, you look over and you see a large cat-like creature, a lizard with wings and a a rat standing on two legs, all next to a tree. Oh, oh God! So the the cat creature is throwing up. Is that hair coming out of? Oh no! Oh, uh. Uh. Okay. I okay. I don't. How did I get here? Uh. They kept touching my amulet as he kind of yells over to Salt. They kept touching my amulet. <laughs> well, clearly your amulet is a bit of a hazard as I pull myself out of the bushes and I'm looking at him really tempted to kick him again. And, he and, and he reaches up for a hand to be let out. Hi, and, and, are you from here? Have you seen another rat that looks like me? It's like it a... looks like me, but doesn't really look like me. It has like a really uh, top, uh, wonderful hat with a penguin inside it, actually. I don't know if the penguin's inside at the moment or not, but um, she's about my height, and she, she's called Summer, and she has a tail like this one. Um, have you seen her? What? <laughs> <laughs> Would I have seen her? Did I see her? Blossom, this is the first time you've seen a rat stand on two legs. Uh, have you? Hmm. Have you? Um, I just like tilt my head like, back and forth. I'm like, what are you? Usually, like when I'm in that form, I'm on four legs. I'm a salt. What are you? I'm a blossom. So you haven't seen summer. What's a summer? It's like a salt, but not. Blossom, no. what languages do you speak? Um, I speak Dwarvish, Halfling, Common, Druidic. Okay. Castagon uh, begins speaking to you in a foreign tongue as he kind of... It, it sounds very much like someone trying to do what, French uh, at you. You're not really sure what it sounds... There's a lot of sounds that almost mimic like bird calls and wind chimes, but they sound deep and smoky. As he's like, uh, Castagon kind of tries ah. to say something, but you cannot uh, understand. What? What? What are you doing? Sorry. I... <clears throat> See, he still holds his hand out for Gideon, but Gideon doesn't help him up, so he just kind of like cups his I area. I actually do help him up, but okay. like I do the whole thing where I hold him right above the bush, making it clear I could let him go again, and then I let him up. Is he kind of like. He kind of gives you the eyes, like, please don't. <laughs> As you, hey Ryan, <clears throat> by chance was yeah. he speaking Sylvan? He was speaking Sylvan. Does anybody else speak I'm... Sylvan? I speak Sylvan. Ah, beautiful. You heard Castagon then say, yeah, "Hello, creature. How far are we away from the Queen's home?" But then she didn't reply, as she does not speak Sylvan. Can I reply in Sylvan and say? It's going to be pretty far away if you don't lead us to where we need to be. So he's like, sorry, I thought you... Ah, and to what all of the rest of you sounds like, voulez-vous avec quoi, mais va, <laughs> right? Uh, from him, uh, goes back to uh, uh, team as he's like, ah, you speak the tongue of the plants. That'll be very helpful here, because uh, I'm getting the hell out of here. As uh, Gideon, you pull him up. Uh, so he's like, little creature um pointing to you blossom little creature he pulls a thorn out of his nether region say we're in the feywild yes that's where i thought i heard him yell do you know how far we are from the queen's home 
Would I? You can roll uh, a uh, history check on that. Okay. Um, uh, 16. 16. You're quite far away. You are a forest dweller to its core, and staying anywhere near the Fey Queen is not something that you would do. However, his use of the word queen is curious. The Feywild hasn't had a queen in nearly a hundred years. What? What queen? We queen? There's no queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the big long dress of flowers, quite beautiful. She, she sit. It, you know the big log. No queen. Oh, man. I'm sorry. You, you meant forest dwellers. Uh, okay, I don't know where we are. We're in the Feywild somewhere. I assume your sister is in the Feywild near the Queen's place. It's a big tree. You can't really miss it. Sorry that she doesn't know where the Queen lives. <gasps> That's where my sister would go. Can we ask your amulet to take us there? As he holds his amulet kind of close, he's like, don't touch my amulet ever again. You already got us into trouble here. I could have directed us to the Queen's place. You don't know anywhere on the Feywild. I, I was trying to do nice by you. <sighs> my pins are back at the inn. I, now I have to go back to the inn. I was trying Whoa. to do right by you all. You ambushed me. Fuck your pins. Where's my friend? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, if you don't, I already gave you a point, but you get you get one in spirit. <laughs> also, Gideon like pauses for a moment while we're all standing in the Feywild. He looks down at oh. his still green tunic with his little <laughs> fairy drift globe and looks at everyone's Halloween costumes, which are still on because none of us have changed. And he goes, "This is the single strangest Hallow's End I have ever participated in." We awesome. fight pumpkins, and now we're in the forest. Hey, hey Ryan. Hold on. Blossom, Hallow roll a history Hallow check. Okay, I was about to say Hallow's End. Um, no, that's And then six. I will get yes back to you. Six. Okay, yeah, you have not heard of Hallow's End. Yes, Salt. Uh, or Alex. Feel free to shoot me down. But can I go... You mean these pins? Ooh. Um, hmm. Make you do a dex save. Okay. 16 plus 6 is 22. You could if you'd like. Let's do it. You hold out your hand. You mean these pins? Is he, he looks over at you. I was not lying earlier. Those used to belong to dear friends and people that I've won from bets over. Please give them back. I do. I hand them back to him. So you hand it back to him. He says, he kind of cups them in his hand for taking his vest. He seems to hold his vest very carefully like it matters to him, though, again, a rag would do just as good. So, why are you all dressed like that? It's not that practical. <laughs> when she says not that practical, Gideon is adjusting the white tights that are clearly riding up too much as he fell. And Pulling he's like... Your butt crack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um... We would just came back from a party where we were all dressing up, and Gideon's gonna start opening his bag and getting out actual clothes. <laughs> um, in that time, team's gonna go over to Zania and say, Zania, I need to bother you for a moment. Uh, right over here, uh, near the group, just a little bit on the outskirts. He's gonna take her over there and say, Do you happen to have the incense I gave you about? I, uh, it was a few months ago. Oh, well, of course. <clears throat> She'll lift up her high slit from her dress and dig into her fanny pack pouch she always <laughs> will carry. And she'll bring it out and hand it to this. Yeah, yes, that, that's the yes, only smelling stuff I have. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I have a feeling we might need help finding Summer. And team's going to take off Otto's collar and place it on the ground. And grab this incense and the charcoal that he got from the area. Uh, and he's going to pull off the kefir uh, symbol on his chest, which is an actual bowl. 
He's going to combine all the ingredients in there. And he's going to look at it. He's going to say, I don't know if this is going to work. And he's going to go and take off a scale and put it in there and then light it. As you forgot, it has been over a thousand years since you've had a scale removed. This is the equivalent of taking like a hundred beard hairs and just ripping them out. It does not feel good to do so. Dragonborn don't grow scales back. And so doing this is quite painful. It's like ripping a fingernail off as you... Ah! Uh, Blossom, you look over seeing the lizard and the cat walk over. You see the lizard begin to rip parts of his body off (laughs) as uh, he places it down next to what looks to be like a plant collar. Uh, This is quite odd for you. Also, chat, bones are skin. I need to know. Right. What What are you doing? Isn't this isn't the place for it? It's four to four right now. Five, six. Oh no, it's six to six now. Seeing lots of bone. Seven. Yeah. It's eight. To, it's almost a tie. It's about eight to eight. Oh, whoa, whoa! Uh, whoa. Oh, oh, skin skin. Skin. oh, there's a bunch of skin that showed up. No, yeah, it's like shirts or skins. Let's go. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I think it's fourteen to eight for skins. Oh dang! All right, skin it is. So, in that case, I have something to say as well for the spell. Please do. When you need. Uh, Uh, Blossom, you're asking, like, what are you doing uh, as, team, your hands go over the material as you begin to say? On the mushtak, look, adli, ada abnuawa. And then he's going to blow into the smoke uh, onto the collar. As, team, you hold up the smoking blow towards the collar blossom you've seen magic like this before though not usually this self mutilation as he blows the incense smoke onto the collar the collar sits there for a moment as the smoke envelops it before collar begins to twitch you kind of hear what sounds like keys rattling or like a dog coming from around the corner as the collar shakes before the smoke begins to pick the collar up as your scale itself flies upward in the center of the smoke and your scale pss, breaks apart and begins to kind of form and get larger than itself bones as you were kind of, ah, all right, I was hoping that he would be back to normal as your scale creates the bones of Atta, but the smoke itself begins to turn to almost like strands of fur and skin around these bones as the collar grips itself tight and kind of pulls itself. As Atta forms from the bottom up, you see a jackal with furry chupacabra-esque wings that float behind it. Very bony, very thin-skinned, almost like a bat's uh, coming off of this small, really, really skinny jackal with ears that shoot backwards from its head uh, as it kind of pulls forward. And you all hear a familiar kind of... kind of angry growl before that growl turns... as this jackal-like howl pierces through the air. It's very tiny. This thing is probably about your size, if not a little bit smaller blossom, maybe about a foot tall, two feet long, uh, as this winged creature with its wings nearly the size of the creature itself falls out of the sky and lands on the ground. And it looks very much just like a mutt-like dog with bat-like wings that kind of flut up before laying back down and pulling themselves up next to it. As you all hear panting like a dog would, which you imagine is what Atta was trying to do before, but just couldn't without any real vocal cords, uh, as you just kind of hear that, <laughs> and you hear kind of the, <laughs> as it kind of barks at you. Um, <clears throat> team, you hear kind of, <laughs> oh, 
Hey, 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 oh my god, oh, 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 oh would you look, oh, <laughs> oh, uh, Papa's got a brand new pair of skin, oh my god, <laughs> this is fantastic. Uh, hey, whoa, hey, uh, oh, uh, hello, um, I, I, see, I wasn't kind of ready, over at everyone. I wasn't ready to lose you either, uh, hey bud. I, um, hey, hey. Um, it's good to, it's good to see you, um, team. Um, uh, I know with eyes, right? I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm a little scared. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, as all of you see this jackal just kind of doing circles kind of, uh, in a scared like pattern. I'm not quite sure, um, what happened, uh, last we were, we were in the fog and then I got, um, blown up. Uh, uh, what, what, what yes. happened? I may have accidentally shot you with my arrow and blew you up. You, um, you, you shot me? I was not intentionally trying to shoot you. I just happened to be where you were. Like a Blossom dog. Blossom just has a look on her face, just like, uh, you shot your own pet? Like, <laughs> what? Well, this is... <laughs> While this is happening, since I'm standing next to Blossom, I'll do like a sort of uh, monologue to her of what's happening, but very disjointed, so that she's kind of got no clue what's going on. So we had a jackal. We blew it up with an arrow. This is a long story. He's a, he's a good friend, uh, but he's bringing him back. Yada, yada. Very salty. Yeah. He ripped off a bone because he used to be a, a scale because he used to be actually bone. He was no skin, but then he actually had skin beforehand. But before that, we don't know what he actually had, but then he was bone and now he's skin. That sort of stuff. As he kind of recoils away from you, team, as you say you blew him up, like a dog where you step on its foot and they kind of kind of pull away, but then you say, but I didn't mean to, and with a dog's eternal loyalty, he says, oh, 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 okay, uh, as long as it was an accident. Uh, great. As he was. There, there were runs up to you. two cultists, they were starting to attack one of us, and I could not see in the fog. Oh, and don't even bother with it. I got to see some old friends for a little bit, and I'm back. So, um... Oh! 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 Oh, no! Uh, actually, no! Uh, all of you just kind of hear a dog kind of <laughs> barking uh, back and forth, but he's Oh! Oh, no! Oh, you you have to hear! Oh, things are bad. Things are going very badly. Um... Uh, so, um... We, we, don't, uh, we don't talk about this um, very much. But uh, I, uh, my magic is because I went to the celestial plane, uh, what, the duat, um, and uh, uh, there's things going on in the celestial plane that are, uh, um, they're, they're all, they're our fault, team. Uh, please do not tell me it is because of that fucking spear. I won't tell you it's because of the spear. Okay. So Blossom, there was a spear, and it was like a really, really shiny spear. <laughs> all of you, all here is just, please don't tell me this is because of the spear, as Salt's explaining. While this is happening, Gideon's yeah. going to go into his bag and take some rations and water um, and a little bowl, and he's going to make, like, like dog food-like paste um, using his cooking skills, and then he's going to waddle over to team and just kind of, like, nudge the bowl into team's hand and then gonna give them space again so he's got a little little treat snack to give uh his boy's first meal um actually gideon uh if if you would like to uh i'm sure Otto would love it i am i do not want to take this from you uh please um i i i kind of kneel and and look over to team uh and then i look to Otto and place it um and then I'm going to take uh, Team's hand uh, and say, I know you feel bad about the accident, what happened, but it was an accident. And he and we still love you lots. And I'm going to take Team's hand and g make him give Ada his first scritches. I do. I give him all the belly rubs. And uh, I'm internally freaking out. <laughs> as uh, you lay the bowl down as Ata basically is like, oh, uh, is this for me? Um. Uh, I haven't had to eat in so long. Um, ah, you better get used to it. It's new for me as well. Okay. Uh, he he leans his head down as if to like take some water, 
But from somebody who's never eaten before and has forgotten the sensation, he essentially tries to breathe at the same time while his nostril <laughs> is in the water and ought to drown briefly for just a little bit. Uh, Smack him on the back. <laughs> yeah, this dog kind of uh, like starts coughing before doing that kind of like <laughs> thing that dogs do whenever they're sick. Where he's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, uh. <laughs> this time he like uses his tongue like a dog actually has to do. He's like, oh, that that's right. Uh, <laughs> see. But, like, in between drinks of water, he's like, yeah, um, you said not to tell you that it's because of the spear, so I won't say that. Is, is she in the celestial plane? Oh, yeah, she's, oh, gosh. Uh, he's, he's, like, continuously uh, drinking water and saying it, like, in between. All of you just hear, like, yip, 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 <laughs> kind of back and like forth. Like one of those waiters that comes over when you're, like, just get the mouthful of food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, oh, uh, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's um, she's causing all sorts of uh, um, ruckus and chaos. Um, it's it's not good there, definitely. Um, I'm not. Uh, I I wasn't a big part of it. I'm on. You wouldn't know it if you had never been. There's a whole other side. Uh, but I um, I heard about it, and uh, the big the higher ups are are not happy. Um. It's, with us or just in no, general? No, it, it's uh, it, it's it's not just you. I don't even know if they know that you did it. Um, they're they're not there yet. They're just they're trying to you know survive. Um, so things are things are a bit hectic in the is celestial. She killing the gods? Oh no 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 nothing like that. No, just the angels. Uh, a lot of the gods are still here on Asterion and the other planes. There's a few in the celestial realms, but uh, most of them died a long time ago. You know the the whole god war. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Well, in the meantime, we will worry about this later. We have to find Summer. She has disappeared thanks to this asset. Oh oh he no. He points to Castagon. Oh. Oh, a new friend? Two new no, friends. No. Uh, as you're like, no, <laughs> before Atta. Not, not that one, this one. <laughs> Atta runs over to uh, cast a gun briefly and is like, hello, uh, before Blossom. Uh, he runs up uh, and jumps on you, like uh, puts its paws like up on your shoulders because it's about the right height, uh, you know, on, on its two legs to like jump up on you. You're a creature of the forest. I, Seeing other creatures like I, this, this isn't unusual. Yeah, but I just want to give it all the scriptures and all the rubs, and I just want to tell him he's such a good boy, and he's so cute, and he's so pretty, and just you're so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Look at those wings; they're so pretty. I've got a good feeling about her. I like her. <laughs> As uh, yeah, you you, you scratch him. Uh, and actually, you scratch his wings. You've seen creatures like this, and you know scratching the wings. Oh, oh. As basically, as soon as you do that. Rolls over. Wants belly rubs. Absolutely. Do you all give the belly, belly rubs. Oh, good. All the belly rubs. All the belly rubs. Uh, as this new stranger in the forest gets down uh, on her knees and begins uh, rubbing on uh, Atta's belly, all of you all just hear kind of the, like the heavy panting that a dog would do. However, team, of course, you hear the, oh, oh, oh no, oh, oh, not there. <laughs> as uh, just kind of <laughs> keeps getting petted in the belly. Um, oh, um, oh, 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 my God, Atta, is that you? Oh my! Zinia, sh you should go give him belly rubs. She's gonna. Jackie was tearing up, but Zinia is drunk, so she will also tear up. Like, oh my god, Zada! And she's gonna go over next to Blossom and kind of watch how Blossom pets a dog because she doesn't know how a dog should be pet. So she kind of like copies after Blossom. Like, oh, okay, oh, make sure her like, um, you know, talons don't come out. There's just the paw, you know, trying to be super I, gentle. I, I like point to like the best spots, and then I'm just like, do it here, do it here, and then mm -hmm. I, like. Give it like a good one and then you just as the two yeah. of you basically each handle a side uh you know like how a dog will do that like one leg gets kind of twitching both legs it looks like he's trying to go at like a full sprint at this point uh, as both of you are petting Atta like crazy and Atta is in love with it it sounds like a little kid in the middle of a tickle fit you can't even get a word out team as far as your uh, everybody else just hears quick pants uh but team it's just now oh my god just kind of back and forth uh trying uh, in between breaths uh, as all of you are petting him uh blossom right, seems I'm gonna, to be very caring I'm gonna, oh, good i'm gonna head to join the uh, the, the the group petting and um pull out of my pocket and go does this help and sort of push it between Arta and Zinnia, and it's the uh, catnip. Oh uh, no. 
<laughs> oh. oh no! <laughs> Shoot. Hold up a second, wait. Hold up, wait Zinnia. a minute. <laughs> Roll a con save. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm not rolling good tonight. Okay, uh, nice. really like... Oh wait. Nineteen. Zinnia, you smell it. And it's, it's like sobering salts, uh, or the smelling salts that just hit your nostrils, uh, and you kind of back away a little bit as you're like, oh. If you give in to that temptation, you are gone for the night. You hold yourself back just a little I... bit. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sober. I am back. Thank you for that salt. Um, thank you. Ada doesn't seem to react to the catnip. Nothing, mm. nothing. You kind of okay. wave it, very much still focused on Blossom Stickles. That, Put it back in my pocket. I'm like, that's that's a cat thing. That That's a cat thing. As I'm oh. giving him the scriptures, I'm just like, that that's for cats. That's different. <laughs> Gideon's going to stand up and help a uh, team from knee like where he's kneeling. Um, and he's just going to look look at him, give him the, the good old Gideon stare. And he goes... We should walk and talk. Um, I'm sure some of that was private, but you mentioned the spear, and you look like you've almost defecated your shorts. So let's get you new pants, and let's have a real chat. Yeah, actually, uh, as you're kind of talking about that, he's like, you, what What spear are we talking about here? What did you... As he's pulling out another thorn from an unknown area. Well, actually, cast a gun. Uh, salt. No. Salt was ex Alex was expecting to be stopped there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like <laughs> Team puts his hand over Salt. He's like, "What? All right, all right. Private conversation. Uh, realize you did step on my down unders." Uh, he points to the rat. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and kind of gives you like a well, finger gun type if, of thing. If you would have been a little more forthcoming, we probably wouldn't have had to do that. No. Also, you know, we're all here. Our friend disappeared due to your vagueness. I think me kicking you in the groin is a good trade. Now hold on here. My vagueness was nothing. I told you do not touch my amulet. All you did was I walked into the guild. You held me down with magic. And you touched my amulet. I'm trying to help you here because I want to get back. As but I'll leave all. you. I'll leave all of you without a second thought. Don't worry. Even we will me? kill you without a second thought either. So stay on our side. Roll an intimidation team. I'm going to give him a little guidance. Do that little sprinkle of mad liquid magic spritz. <laughs> Guidance is a D4. D4. Cause it's currently an 18. Oh, come on. You can do it. There we go. And that's a plus four. So 22. 22. All right. As you stand bold and imposing above him, kind of getting in his face. He's a drow, so he's tall, but you're a dragonborn. So you are of equal height, if not a little bit taller. As you kind of impose over him, as he looks up at you. He says, in a very much more serious tone than you have heard him talk all night, very much lower, very much intentional, aimed at you, rather than like talking to the room like a performance. He's talking to you, team. He says, listen, lizard, I'll send you to a plane you'll never return from. I'll help you get out of here, but do not threaten me like that again. Do we have an understanding? <laughs> Team's gonna like cock his head and be like, you know what? All right. Because I can tell you where I don't want to be. And Team's gonna start walking off with Gideon. Castagon kind of pulls his vest up and comes back over to Zania and Blossom. He's like, so what's this little rat thing? Uh, looking at Atta as Team and Gideon and Salt kind of walk off uh, to converse. Oh, no. oh Salt, you I... stand? I'm definitely going to stay next to Castagon. Okay, great. Poor, my poor friend has been, like, misunderstood. Beautiful. Uh, as uh, He's like, so what's this uh, little rat thing here? Uh, as he's looking down at Atta um, with uh, just a thing? 
like changed face and back to just kind of like happy guy at the party thing as Blossom, you're petting uh, Atta there. Team and Gideon walk away to the side uh, for just a little bit. So we're going to start with Zania, Blossom, Salt, and Gideon, or and uh, Castagon mm -hmm. before we go to Gideon and team talking to the side. Uh, as he's Salt. like, what's this? Can you put that away? It's already in my pocket. Okay, okay. i come back. Unless you're sniffing my pocket. It's, it's very potent. That's very potent. I'll just stand right here. I'll be over here. <clears throat> so, wait, so what are we doing? I got distracted by the cute dog thing. Oh, it's like a dog. Okay. Hmm. Looks so, like a dog, acts like a dog, very cute like a dog. It's a good boy. Yeah, where I look like a rat, act like a rat. I thought the wings, you know, bats flying, they're kind of like rats, but it's on the, I didn't know, I didn't know. Oh, it's a dog, okay, sure. Does that mean if I get some wings, I become a bat? We could try it. <gasps> I've never had wings before. Me neither. I have oh. It's not that fun. Sometimes. Huh. Depends on how fast you're going. How, how fast well, can we I go? Well, I go fast. Yeah. Um. I once had a friend, Herc, and I sort of like put my head down, who was very, very fast. And I, I, I'd love to be as fast as him one day. Gnu, one second. Okay, continue. Now, are you talking about, like, a lizard m man over there who's got uh, his wings? Is that what you mean? Uh, when he's talking to you, Blossom. No. Like, I can turn into things and be the things. <gasps> show me, 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 show me. Got it. Um. Um. I mean, I can only do it a couple times, like, a day. So I don't know if I'm gonna do it right now, but because I don't know what would no, and I can't communicate as great when I'm the other forms. So, like, if you want to keep talking to me, I have to stay in this one. Fair enough. Okay. Listen, uh, little one. I may have been a little vague earlier. Can you just tell me where the city is? There's only the one. If you've ever been there, you're gonna know it. Uh, as Blossom, roll a history check one more time for me. Uh, nine. Nine. You've never been to this one city. You don't know what he's talking about. What, what city? Uh... Mm. There's so many people in the Feywild that just never go. I'm sorry. It, I'm not mad at you. I just we're just, we're trying to find a friend, uh, and she's probably very lost. My sister. His sister. Oh. Um. I mean, I could ask where the city might be, but. Oh, do you have like uh, a tribe around here? I mean, I could just ask the trees. Hello? The trees? <laughs> he just kind of asks uh, into the echo up in the air. Hello. So yeah, I'll cast um, Speak with Plants. Ooh. How do you cast Speak with Plants and describe it for me? Um, so one of the, the flowers in my hair, she like um, takes out the, the piece and she like cups it in both her hands and she just blows on it so the little petals start flittering around um and so she can use that once a day to talk with plants her uh plant uh, fidget spinner that she blows on and it starts uh spinning around uh <laughs> that's that's what i'm yeah it, it's a <laughs> blossom like fidget spinner that kind of floats up and around before you pull it back into your hair. And it begins spinning perpetually. Uh, these, uh, the bloom of this flower, not very fast, just kind of slowly going around as uh, this very, very bright pink uh, blossom of a flower spins in your hair. As you do so, around you are the bushes in which Gideon and Castagon landed upon. 
those extremely large elephant ears coming off of some uh, plants that are sticking out of the ground. You notice that they're not actually connected to trees. They are just singular elephant ear mm -hmm. things. It's very typical Feywild, but it's very odd for everyone else around here. And two incredibly large trees the size of what would be the equivalent of like buildings in Chicago, right? Uh, nearly a mile up, uh, it feels like. Very, very tall. Uh, as you look over, casting this, because those are all in range, they all begin to awaken and move around you. All of you there next to Blossom suddenly hear the shaking and rustling uh, of bushes and trees around you. It feels like a hurricane as the two uh, elephant ear things flap down back and forth, the wind kind of knocking you and pushing you back and forth. Blossom, you're very used to this. You stand there kind of uh, prepared uh, as Atta kind of gets thrown back and forth between the wind briefly <laughs> before landing on the ground. Um, yeah, hi guys! You hear um... the sound of a dozen tiny, tiny, tiny screams coming from the bushes that Gideon and Castagon oh. land on. They're like, ah, <laughs> oh, no. You poor buddies. Just, I don't, oh. Oh. Just a continuous, I... it's very quiet. It very much sounds like any movie where there's like a really tall person and like Honey has Shrunk the Kids where they're like, oh, I didn't hear that. It's very, it sounds like a whisper from your uh, distance that you are from them, uh, as uh, many, many of the berries sitting here on the tree are kind of screaming out. The two elephant ear ones sounding very, very much like your... Merry berries at the moment. <laughs> GFY, you know it. I need a GFY. I've got none at the moment. Oh, oh, well, let's let's get you some more. Yeah, Salt, you got one. Uh, I think the current standing is Gideon one, Salt one, Summer one, Zania one, and that's it for GFYs. Um you hear the two elephant ears sounding very much like a cartoon elephant as both of them kind of uh, talk back and forth to you. They're like, hey, quit blowing on me. As the other one's like, you quit blowing on me. As the two uh, just kind of wave back and forth, keep knocking each other up and down in the air. Uh, as you see the giant trees kind of swaying back and forth, not really answering to anything. As you're like, oh, oh God, oh God, what are you doing, Blossom? Um, so I want to run up to the really, one of the really big trees, um, yeah. just because, um, they have a better range of the area, so maybe they could give us a direction to where a city is, if there is one that she really knows. What are you going to ask him, and how? Um, so I go up to one, and I put my, my hand on the swaying trunk, mm -hmm. and I sway back and forth with it, and I'm like, hi, Mr. Tree, I hope your day is good. Do you see a city? And I just follow back and forth. The tree, as its top sways back and forth, it seems to be moving hundreds of yards every few seconds at the very top of it, just for how large it is. It very much is like the redwoods in California, where there's not a huge amount of branches, but each branch is the size of a tree in its own, uh, almost like a pine tree sticking out of this thing here. As it kind of sways back and forth, you kind of feel it begin to slowly start before it gets very, very heavy and loud beneath your feet. Zinnia, Salt, Blossom, and Castagon, it feels like an earthquake underneath your feet. Again, Blossom, you stand there just kind of like oh. expecting it to happen, but everybody else is kind of like freaking out and possibly even pulling out weapons uh, as you hear in the deepest voice that you've ever heard, sounding like the earth itself is talking to you, Blossom. As you ask it, hey, Mr. Tree, can you see a city from here? Uh, the tree says, before the earthquake kind of bellows up, and he's like, oh, city, what city do you speak of? Where it almost sounds like the moaning of the wood moving is the voice that you hear. How many questions do I get? Oh, it, they are animated for 10 minutes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, okay. Um, I didn't know if it was you had certain questions you could ask. No, no, no. You go nuts. Anyway. Um, they, they don't have okay. to answer you, but they are animated, and you've talked to them very nicely so far. Mr. Tree, um, the tall, pointy-eared one back there was saying that they used to have a queen, so it has a really big tree. 
Castagon sits there kind of frightened. Zinnia Salt, what are you doing uh, as Blossom's speaking to this tree with her hand on this trunk? She's honestly just like amazed at this little being that like knows nature so well and she's kind of like taking notes. Okay. My, uh, my tail is up and darting left and right, trying to keep an eye on everything that's going on. Castagon is basically with the rumbling of the earth, being that he's so skinny, he's very top heavy. He's basically trying to hold himself up without falling uh, as he kind of is doing the arms to the side thing. Uh, as you can almost feel the roots beneath this great tree slithering like snakes underneath you or great worms kind of causing the ground itself to move. But Blossom, again, you're just talking to a buddy uh, as the tree mm -hmm. says, again you can see the other trees shake and you can hear the birds very much the stereotypical movie like something loud stomped its foot and all the birds go flying off of the trees however all of you look up and these birds are brightly colored and quite large as they fly off of these trees uh, as he says mm, Suti, you mean the old palace of the furry queen. Yes, 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 yes. That one, that one, that one. I hear the queen is dead. As his dead kind of echoes, dead, dead, dead. I know that too. Like, there hasn't been one for a while, but... That's where the pointy-eared one said that their friend might be. So I guess that's the way that we're going. Unless you've seen another small um, rat person like that one. And I point at Salt. As you point at Salt, all of you suddenly feel the ground kind of move up beneath you. As you see the tree itself bend over what must be half a mile of tree turning into a giant U-shape downward, what looks like a building going to crash down on top of you. Zania, Salt, Casagon, all kind of just cover your head and say your internal prayers before it stops just short of you. And just by the economies of scale, the tip of this thing looks like a spear tip compared to the rest of it as it aims down. And as you see, two little leaves at the top of this tree seem to have eyes that open up almost as if on bunny ears on these tiny leaves on this tree before it pulls itself back up and sways. It takes like a minute to do this. Gideon and team, you walked away and you've kind of felt some rumblings before you turn back and see this tree moving in the distance. We'll get to that when we come to your conversation in but a moment. Remind me to <laughs> interrupt your conversation mid that. Uh, yes, Medusa, it is very googly eyes looking uh, on this tree before you hear... No rats come through here. It is but a king now in the palace, is it not? And I have to make a roll for that. You could roll a history. You currently know that there's no queen. There's no queen. But you've been kind of outside the city based on your histories so far. I would say that you wouldn't know of a king in okay. place of the queen. Um, so I still have my hand on his trunk because I'm still talking to him and I want him to acknowledge that I am. But I turn and I face um, Castagon, or I don't know, the big drow one. Um, and I and I go, uh, so there's, 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 there's no queen, but there's a king now um. oh 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 that's that's mm, mm, mm. that's either the best news or the worst news i have not talked to the fey king as he if he calls himself that now in over a century possibly longer that's uh, fantastic or the worst i'm not entirely sure um we'll have to see do you, do you still think the, the 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 other one would go to the palace? Oh, she wouldn't have had a choice. That's where I had the amulet prime to go. She's there. We just need to get there. Uh, would it be the new one or the old one? I can't Im I can't imagine that they moved it. It's just a it's just a big fallen log. Uh, okay, by big, that's an understatement. Uh, 
it, it is truly awesome in size by the definition of the word. It's got to be there. It would probably take a few days to leave there. Okay, so I turn back to the tree. Uh, Mr. Tree, is there a new palace or is it still the old palace? It sways again back and forth. Mm, as far as I can see from here, it still sits on the hill. Which, which direction? Mm, it leans forward, facing what is the north uh, of your direction. Those of you standing here have no idea what north would be besides Blossom, based on the two suns. You would not be able to call north from the sun's direction, since there are two in the air. But Blossom, you know where north is, as the tree kind of leans that way, uh, without really uttering a word. Um, because that's kind of like the end of... Cumbra. I'm like, thank you so much, Mr. Tree, and as much as I can, kind of like the, the little girls in um, my neighbor Totoro, where they go and hug a tree, or like Totoro and their arms try and reach around, but it's just smack. It's basically <laughs> a flat wall as you <laughs> kind of smack up against it. Uh, as all of you see her stand there, she puts her hands up to the wall. Thank you very much, Mr. Tree. It's <laughs> just like a, like a lizard Thank up you. against it. Uh, as um, you all feel the tree like shake. It feels again like an earthquake beneath your feet. But Blossom, you know, he's happy. Um, and then I, I run back to the others and I say, it is north from here. As you say it's north from here, we're going to pause to Gideon and team as you're walking away. Uh, this is... About five minutes back. No movement of trees yet. Uh, as you all walk off on your own conversation, leaving them just not, you know, out of eyesight, but just enough to not be heard. Out of earshot. Yeah. Um, Gideon, while he's walking, the team uh, finds like an area where it's just like, uh, like maybe like a pond or something where they can both just sit. And Gideon opens his bag and like hands team his clothing and armor. Um, and then Gideon goes and starts to like change as well out of this. As much as it fits the Feywild to be dressed as the hero of time, <laughs> Gideon currently is not comfortable. Um, so Gideon, while while changing and kind of just like looking the other direction, says over his shoulder, Zinnia told me everything. Um, I I approached her initially because. Well, I represent the time domain of clerics, a a group that explores anomalies and worships um, a scar that can't really be explained. And um, in short, I asked her why I shouldn't um, report all of you to them. I haven't, in case you're wondering, but I do know. And... From the look on your face, it seems like things have escalated. Uh, yes, very much so. Um, it appears Ithka has made her way into the celestial plane. And it's not good. Gideon, roll religion. Um... Sorry, I should know this off. Um... That'll be a uh, 19, base 13, plus 6. You've, you've heard of the celestial being, but that was not your particular area of study. You know mm -hmm. that there are people who study them. You know that there are beings that live on their familiars and whatnot that come down, ancestors that will watch over people that still live on the material planes. Going to the celestial plane is usually something left for scholarly folk or those with dastardly deeds in mind, and it rarely works out well for those with malicious intent. Um, do you think that uh, Ithka will be able to make progress there? I mean, that's the celestial plane, I think. Title is enough to uh, state its reputation. 
I, I do believe so. She was very tenacious. Yes. I, before I knew what the, before I remembered what the spear was, I did not gain my memories back until I was brought back. Um, before I knew fully what the spear was, um, Takar, he would use it to go to the celestial plane himself. Um, it's long story short, it is not good that she has the spear. And she is also in the celestial plane as well. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the same thing I told uh, Zanea. And at this point, um, Gideon, once he's changed, he's wearing uh, his time cleric kind of robe, which is uh, his, like, Gideon's normal, like, puffy attire. But it's, like, one of those, like, large leather, like, almost Robin Hood style coats mm. that's, like, very, like, tight close. But it's got, like, these, like, teal designs all over it. And it's, like, dark. Um, and he uh, ties his hair back in a very tight bun. Uh, and he goes right up to uh, team and puts his hands on both of his shoulders and goes, you did not make a mistake. You were in a situation that was irreparable and anyone would have done the same thing. This is scary. And I'm sure the, the spear being in the hands of, well, terror incarnate, as from what I can understand, isn't great. But it's not your fault. And I hope you don't wear it like it is. Thank you. And I would assume it's about probably this point in time when the ground starts shaking <laughs> and yeah. team immediately grabs the scythe out and turns. I wasn't to like gonna interrupt you. To cast gun. <laughs> but yes, as Gideon says, I know this is scary before the tree seeming like it's about to engulf your friends leans overward, a whole entire building about to fall on them. Your heart sinks before it stops. You see two tiny eyes before the tree pulls itself back up, and you see Blossom hug the tree. Have you seen this before? We're in the Feywild. I'm not even going to pretend like I've seen anything before. Fair enough. Well, we should get back. Yeah. Um. Just know that I'm here if you ever need to talk, and uh, I'll do my best to help. I'm not planning on ratting out anyone to the time domain, but if if the time clerics can help in any way, I will reach out. But I trust you all. Well, I will tell you this, uh, even if you do not rat us out, uh, I, 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 I've only known you for a short time, but family comes quickly here in this group. Um, glad to have you as a part of it. Uh, and I am not afraid to face punishment for stealing the spear. Well, it's not coming from me, and I'm sure the time domain, they're not much for um, angry rants or anything. They're more so scholarly thinkers, and uh, so, I mean, if we were to speak to them, they I don't think they'd give you a slap on the wrist more so as just ask the questions I'm asking. Where to next? Because even with time, you can't fix the past, but you can make the future a whole hell of a lot better. Let's go, buddy. And I pat him on the shoulder, and then I'm going to walk off. As the two of you walk back over to the group, Blossom finishing her hug up and turning to the group, you see the lizard and the brightly colored man walking back over in y'all's direction as Castagon, Salt, Zinnia, you turn to see Team and Gideon. They must have seen what's going on, and they don't look to be in two terribly worried about it you were very worried while you're here they must know more about this place than you <laughs> steve's like no uh but <laughs> they rejoin the group uh Atta flies over to team and kind of curls up on your leg and walks beside you like a dog does uh seeing its loyal owner just kind of looking up smiling even the translation in your head team is just a dog panting uh, and happy uh, and for those who want to know, uh, I it was Arabic for I miss you very much. Uh, return to me, Ada the Jackal. I was going to ask afterwards if you didn't tell people. So, yeah, beautiful. No. Did I give you a point for that? I feel like I should. I did not. Oh, well, but then you have a point okay for that. If you didn't you have a okay, point, for I'll that. take it. I meant to, <laughs> but I forgot if I did or didn't. Right. 
Uh, as they rejoin the group, Castagon says, okay, uh, North, remind me, and he's basically kind of asking you, which direction is North? It is that way! And I just, like, point in the direction. That way! Great. Um, I, I, I tend and I see Salt do the same thing, and I get that way! <laughs> Both of you on the battle And, I, and my, my pointing is kind of like this way, but then I see which way she's pointing, and my hand quickly matches. <laughs> The two of them stand side by side. That away! Oh god, there's two of them. Once they point and uh, and they say which way's north, uh, Gideon's keen mind internal compass just kicks in, and he like kind of maps things out and goes, hmm, "Okay, easy enough." Great. Now you know the direction to go. I'm gonna make sure your friend is okay. All right. Going to make sure she's not dying. It's not her fault. She was trying to be helpful. And like, kind of points to Gideon. Few people. I'm going to make sure she's okay. I'm not going to be able to find my way back to you because I don't really know where we are. Everything looks the same here. You'll be all right. Go that direction. Before Castagon like well, flicks his thumbs and poof, disappears in a puff of gray smoke. The son of a bitch is going to leave us here. Well, that was just rude. I definitely know, and nothing around here looks the same. Just saying. Anyway. Blossom yells out at him, uh, <laughs> basically like into the void, hoping that it carries along his uh, transportation uh, <laughs> into whatever disappearance he did. She's, and nothing around here looks the same. As you look over at the two trees, you notice subtle marking differences uh, on their bases. You could tell these trees different in the same way that you could tell Drew and Jackie apart. Uh, they're just so different. How could people not see that? Uh, however, all of you feel like you were stuck in the middle of the largest jungle about the size of ants. Take care Alone. of Summer. So you start. yell out and hear your echo bounce off of the large trees in the forest. I'm going to go around and hand everyone their armor. Uh, so I give like Zinnia their armor. Um, I go to Salt and hand their uniform. Um, unless Salt wants to be still dressed as a space cowboy. Um, but I give everyone their stuff back. <laughs> Maybe I could do both. <laughs> you do you. Space rogue. <laughs> uh, Actually, gonna... I will... Um... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'll change no, it to my rogue outfit and then put a couple of sticks in my hair to match Blossom. Nice. So is this how you do it? I, my hair, it stays up, so that's why that's there. Because otherwise it just goes everywhere and it's really annoying. And then, yeah, so I just use some things to put it out of my face. Wow, mm -hmm. I don't think we've really introduced ourselves. Um, my name's Salt. I'm the I'm a master archaeologi archaeologist, blacksmith, acrobatic author, aviator, astronaut, detective at your service. Don't forget arsonist. Learning. <laughs> arsonist that, and that, training. <laughs> that that's a lot of things. I'm Blossom. Mm. I'm Blossom. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Blossom. <laughs> Team will kneel down, let his wings unfurl so they don't like dig into the earth and extend a hand up. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you for helping us. Um, because I'm guessing his hand's probably like twice the size of her. She just grabs his with both her hands and then just vigorously starts shaking it up and down. Nice uh, to uh, meet uh, you. Oh, hey, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't really do this around here, but okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Zinnia is putting her paw out also um, if you don't do this I'm Zinnia by the way uh, if you don't do that here what do you do Just when you say hi paw. do you hug do you wave it's mostly the people of my tribe so like uh, it depends on if I like them then I give them hugs if not we just say hi and we walk away. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Zania. Hi! I can give no. you a hug if you would like one. You're very sweet. I would like one, actually. <laughs> I can give you a hug if you'd like one. 
Gideon oh, stares into space in horror, thinking of a full tribe of people that just hug on, on meeting each other, and he's just going like, oh god, please no. <laughs> um, um, and I suppose we should go north now? We should find Summer. He hasn't introduced himself, and I point at, um, Gideon. I oh, I'm Gideon. so sorry. Oh, uh, hello. I'm Gideon. I, um, uh... I read and stuff. Um, we don't. If you want to hug, you can. We can. We can also do high fives, handshakes, or I can just give you a thumbs up from here. You, you seem like the one who'd like a high five. Would you like a high five? You know what? I'd be okay with a high five. That sounds nice. And I, I do the thing where I like, cause she's not a t a lot shorter than me, but I kind of do a little hunch and high five. Like, like when you're ah. high five and a kid. <laughs> As uh, Blossom stands in the center, uh... <laughs> that's illegal, Drew. Drew, you get a GFY. You know you do. Hey, it's been a while. I haven't had one. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. It was glorious, but you know you earned one. <laughs> I just like as soon as you said child hand, and I looked down, and I was like, I have to. Mm, show the people at home one more time, Drew. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I hate it. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> Baby. Baby hands. Baby hands. Baby hands. Right. And as we head off, I'm going to stick my hand out to Blossom. Sort of like to say, hey. You want to come up the front with me? Oh. Uh, yeah. I'm the only one who, I guess, knows where we're going. I haven't well, actually we're... been there. This way. And I sort of skip forward, hopefully kind of semi-dragging her along. Yeah. Cool. You basically go the direction you pointed, Blossom, as you're kind of being pulled uh, by this yeah. Ratfolk character. Uh, the rest of you, being that you have longer legs, can still walk to keep up. It's kind of a quick walk, but Salt is pulling Blossom uh, very quickly, trying to kind of lead and be out front. Blossom, as this city, this great log is described to you, you lived in this forest your whole life. You never heard of a city. It must be quite a ways away if it's not anywhere near where you've hunted, lived in, cared for. It must be quite the distance. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a while. <laughs> Perfect. I can I can show you some really cool things. Oh. And when um when we are far enough ahead of the group, I um pop open a pouch and uh, with my pepper tail come out to circle around it, I show her my little buddy friend. You like animals? As he opens up his this pouch. This is Geekbert. You see a native of your plane, a lemur-like creature with a tail that's maybe about three foot long, very silver in appearance, and its whole fur is this silver-like fur. Um, it, it is essentially the tiny monkeys that you always see in TV, like Ace Ventura, etc., but with a big, long tail. Uh, it's Zabumafu, but with a very thin tail. Um, as it kind of looks and pulls itself out of his pouch. Salt doesn't open the pouch enough to let this thing out, just enough for you to be able to see it and see its face. However, Blossom would never confine a creature into such a small space like this. Creatures are meant to roam free. Bag. Why is it in the bag? I haven't figured out a better house for it yet. It pulls its head back in and reaches its arm out, like reaching for something, just sticking out of the top. And I give him some of the banana cookies I have. Uh, as as it lands on one, you kind of pulls it down into the pouch, and you can hear what sounds like the crunching of very like um, firm cookies, very crispy cookies. Uh, they don't need those here. Oh, oh, okay. Oh no. Oh, um. Geekbert She's just very cookies. kind of confused at the idea of a domesticated 
um, animal of this kind. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, oh no. <laughs> Salt, Blossom, what are you doing? I'll pop it back Is in he, the pouch. He's, then... he's trying to lead me in the direction I pointed or in the direction he originally pointed? The direction no, you the pointed. The correct direction. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, also, Lemur is the name. I just couldn't think of the name. Uh, <laughs> it's my gecko. <laughs> he calls yeah. it a gecko. You've heard of it being called a silver tailed lemur. But he calls it a gecko. Yeah. So if you know anything that, that can help me, I'm trying to end up teaching him to to be um, uh, a good member of society. Um, what should I roll to to like remember all like the details of this animal? Roll in nature. Uh, you can use int or wisdom, whichever your preference. For nature, I don't like okay. that nature can't use wisdom. That's silly. Uh, 12. 12. Right. You've heard of these creatures. You know that they live here. It's strange that he's not from this place and has one. Uh, and so that's odd. You've never seen one domesticated. You don't know if that's good or bad for the creature. You hope good. But uh, you're, you're a little skeptical of keeping something that you see swing through the trees at such a quick speed uh, being so domesticated like that. Oh, mm, usually they just like roam through the trees and they like to swing and have a good time. I've never seen one act like this before. So I'm a little weirded out and I would let him go. But he seems to like it in there, which is weird. So you have a stash of cookies still, and you think you know why he likes it in there. I do. I have three and a quarter remaining after that feed. Okay, you're just leaving it in the air, Salt? Yeah, just leaving it in the air, and I'll, I'll just start talking about random stuff that we're, we've got on adventures and, you know, um, all this cool stuff. We met this giant god, 40 elephants high, you know, where the bring us a plague. All the, all the fun stuff. Hold that on. Usually you about. Blossom, 40 elephants high. That's taller than the tree you saw earlier. That doesn't sound right. 40? That, that should be way too tall. That tree was not even 40. Very, 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 very tall. That tree might have been two elephants tall? Was it only that big? I thought it was huge. Did oh, it have, no. like, other trees hanging out of it? Oh, it, it definitely did. Uh, in her mind, this she's thinking, that that tree is uh, probably two be... elephants tall? Wait, no, no, no. That tree's not two elephants tall. She, that it, it's like up to her whether elephants. she says that, but that's what she oh. thinks. Yeah. Uh... 40 is, like, way too big, because, like, that tree back there was only two elephants tall, and, like, that's a two? pretty big tree. No, that's, like, at least 50, 60, 70 elephants. That's a big tree. Blossom, roll a nature yep. check. Uh, 8. 8. He's wrong. Elephants are way bigger than what he's describing. Your elephants must be tiny, cause like. Well, elephants... ele I'm I'm tiny. My elephants are big compared to me. Yeah, but elephants. I'm smaller than you, and elephants are like way bigger than what you're describing. Are they like a special elephant? Like, uh... I guess we could call. Uh, uh, we're in the Fae? Else? Would there be like a fey elephant? <gasps> is this a new unit of measurement? This is kind I of like uh, under, uh, under. You, know, you know what they call Italian parsley in Italy? Parsley. They wouldn't call it a fey elephant here, uh, and so they she calling it a fey elephant is weird. That's like calling this an earth cat. It's an elephant. We've got elephant too, so it, it must be like. 
ha huh. the con the, the 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 conversion is like maybe gold to silver okay <laughs> as salt uh <laughs> continually confuses blossom as y'all are walking for a while Zania, team and gideon you're in the back uh conversing as you see maybe about 20, 30 yards ahead of you, Salt, uh, talking very excitedly, uh, now that he's kind of yelling, like, elephants are so huge, they're big, uh, just kind of talking back and forth between the two of them. What are y'all doing at this time? Um, I look to Zinea, and uh, I do whatever the clerical equivalent of showing off that I am completely spellburnt is. So, like, I, like, open my palms, and, like, my, like, in my hands, I just create some arcane light, um, and showing that it's just like, um, I don't mean to be, I don't want to slow down our trip or anything, as I'm sure a summer is very lost. But if we run into anything in these woods, and the Feywild, if, if the stories are correct, there is trickery afoot everywhere. I am of virtually no help. I would like us to set camp if we can and rest for a bit. I mean, we just fought a giant monster pumpkin, and we gave ourselves pat on the back, which is great. But, like, we are... On, in no shape to deal with what this new land has to offer. Um, as you were going to turn to Zania, she's actually like stretching. And she yawns and she's like, oh man. And she realizes how long of a day it's been already. Like this is still all in one day. And she's like, I um, I have to agree with you. I um, And she does the equivalent to like, <laughs> like the dust or cloud just <laughs> goes out of her head. <laughs> exactly, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Magic goes. <laughs> it's like those old c cartoons where, like, there's an old Ford <laughs> that's like trying to move its way, like, bah, 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 and just yeah, coming exactly. out of your hands. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite trope. I, I am. Um, I have to agree. I'm. I'm quite tired too. Um. Team kind of I, looks over. And he's like, I yes. Uh, I also am uh, quite tired, and uh, I would like to. I like to sleep with my uh my dog, being that he's back again. I... Hmm. Otto kind of looks up and pants at him. She's like, "It's uh, I don't like sleeping alone, and I was afraid I'd have to do that tonight." And so, hey, Otto's back. He's good. I mean, we've got quite a bit of dense foliage and whatnot, so I don't recommend we just pop a squat anywhere. But if we can find a so a, a tree to climb, a, uh, a cave or anything, I think that would serve us best because um, I'm assuming it looks like it's daytime right now. Oh, yeah, like, there's two suns in the sky. Yeah. Um, would I be able to tell, like, if there's anything I've heard about, like, night cycles in the Feywild or anything? Like, I feel like that's obscure, get, like, knowledge that Gideon might have, like, read. You could roll but a nature I don't check think on that. Extent. Okay. Um... And nature. Ooh, my nature is beans. Uh, ooh, 13. 13. 10 You've... plus 3. You're not sure when these two suns will set. You know, planar travel, it could be a while. You don't know the specifics for Feywild suns, but uh, who knows? It could be hours or longer. I say we uh, ask our new friend what um, night could look like if we sleep overnight or if we just drop now and sleep. Um, I would just hate to find out that there is something terrifying out here. Like um, I hear them talking about elephants and I would hate to find out that fairy elephants actually breathe fire or something. I don't know. But if, uh, if you're both not opposed to, um, Oh, you're walking up to us, right? Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, and catch then a... he flew out the window. Oh, Robert was amazing. Um, Blossom. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is an odd question coming from someone who doesn't exactly know what time of day it is. Um, when does night usually fall here? Blossom. Night is probably next month. A month away. It's a month away. Like we don't get it Wait, very. Wait, is that like uh, your elephant month or my elephant month? It's a month away. <laughs> okay, Gideon, it might be. Uh... 
More than eight hours. <laughs> Can't take it. So. Huh. Um, take a point. I was just suggesting. <laughs> I was just suggesting um, to our, our friends that we find a spot to uh, to sit and rest for a bit. Um, I know Blossom, you might be feeling sprightly, but some of us are doing a little worse for wear. Um, so if we could take a, a small, just take eight hours to catch our breath, um, have a meal. Uh, it's been a long, long day. Uh, we, we, we could do that. Okay. Blossom, it is nearing about the end of your day, and night is, you know, it, it goes in month-like cycles here. It just started becoming daylight here in the Feywild. It's going to be light for a while. You're used to sleeping when the light's out. That's not even anything you would think about. If you wanted to stop and take a rest, you could and would. Yeah, so, I'm, I mean, it is pretty late. Well, I got off of few hours ago anyway so uh if you guys want to sleep we could sleep now we could have a rest i guess i would like yeah. that very much it seems like a good idea yeah all right well okay. i'll start scouring for a spot um Zania, do you want me to do you want to come help me look for alcoves and things of course sounds good as oh uh, team maybe you could uh give us a little aerial view do you still have that in you for the day or uh uh, I don't think that I, I do, I? but hey, buddy. Oh, sorry, Blossom, you were saying something? You don't want my help? I, oh. I'm pretty I tired wanna... if you could do it. Change, 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 change. I didn't want to impose, but I, I would actually love to see what your abilities are. Um, so I'm gonna transform into, I guess, a fey version of a giant eagle. <laughs> Ooh. So as uh, I, I want it to be miniature because she's small, so it has to be small. <laughs> this is rather than a giant eagle, it's an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> you transform into an eagle with the stats and abilities of a giant eagle. Uh, however, when you transform, it is Fey. When you do so, coming out from underneath the feathers are almost like little. Uh, Re almost like little tendrils, but they're they're plants uh, that come between the actual feathers themselves that kind of uh, span off of there, almost like little pink vines that come between the feathers. The eagle itself is colored brown on the top, very much like a normal eagle. However, its bottom feathers are all a rainbow of colors underneath. Salt, you recognize the rainbow feathers coming from underneath this giant mini regular eagle that Blossom is turning into uh, with all of these like uh, reeds and stuff coming off the back of it. Its eyes also uh, are a little bit bigger than normal. This is a very anime looking eagle uh, just because you're from the Fae uh, and its eyes begin to shift different colors uh, as it looks around. It's almost pearlescent uh, as it reflects from the sunlight above as she kind of pulls up your wings. Blossom, you turn and look at all of them. Your vision very enhanced as you can almost zoom in and out being like an eagle that you are now. Mm -hmm. Off to the skies. So wait, elephants here are bigger than ours, but eagles here are smaller than ours. This is going to take some numbers. Gideon's already sketching this. Like, going like, oh my gosh. Um, okay, can I... Um, would it be possible for me to pick up salt as I did it. Oh, yeah, you've got the strength of a regular eagle. You're <laughs> a very dense eagle. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So I like, I like just because I'm probably still standing like in front of him. So I cock my head and I like make a couple like, um, like, I guess purring bird noises. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> um, and then remembering what he said before, if like I could take him, um, I like. Um, flap my wings and I start to fly up and then um, grab him by my claws by his shoulders and I just take off into the sky Salt you're sitting there just more in like wow before very similar uh, to like her you're grabbed by a bird's talons and lifted uh, up into the sky flying very very quickly through however this time you don't have like a place to hold on like you did with Herc you're just kind of at the mercy of this eagle uh, with its claws kind of or talons gripping each of your arms it does not hurt she picks you up very very gently as if this, this is a common thing for her she picks you up and begins flying around one of the nearby large trees and flying up and up and up and up it takes her a solid minute 
with her wings flapping as best she can to get up towards the tree line and heading up and over. As she does so, you're briefly greeted by the sight of the two suns, one an intense, deep, deep purple in the sky that is shining out ever forward, giving a kind of pink hue to the horizon as the much brighter regular appearance sun on the other side of it contracts or uh, contradicts contrasts that's the word i'm looking for contrasts uh, the purple uh, light coming from the other side giving the majority of the normal glow that you're used to across the landscape as blossom flies up you hear the typical ah! eagle sound as uh, she flies up and over these trees when she does so it looks like a grassy hill spanning for ages and ages and ages however these are all treetops as she's flying over yes very (laughs) as she's flying uh, up and over these things giving you a great view of the sky blossom and salt roll the perception checks wow i actually perceived i perceived unusual 20 plus 7 27 did you say nat 20 yes Beautiful. Salt. 19. 19. Salt. Between the two suns, the smaller purple one and the larger uh, bright yellowish orange one, directly where it was pointed before, you see these rolling hills. On the very top of one, you see what appears to look like, again, just the scale of it. It looks like a fallen log, maybe 20, 30 yards away. But judging by the distance and the size of these trees... This thing is miles and miles away, maybe 20, 30 miles to the north. That thing must be absolutely enormous by the time you get to it. Blossom, you look around, you see the dead tree to the north that you and your tribe know of. You also spot and look to the east. You roll your eagle eyes (laughs) uh, as you see some of the trees shaking and bending kind of moving back and forth between where you are and the northern dead tree you're pretty sure you know what's making them move again these are mile tall trees quite wide takes quite a lot of strength to move these things seeing them shake like that there must be an elephant moving between you and your destination that's not great Okay. Um, I'll fly back down just so I'm closer than the, the rest of the, the group. Mm-hmm. Um, and then can I just make another roll to see where would be a safe place to like have a rest? Yeah, absolutely. Roll me one more perception. That is a non-natural 20. Right. Uh, there is a beautiful branch that you could perch yourself on that will give you pretty much a 270 view of the camp and you can kind of fly around to check every now and again it'd be a great spot it's a couple hundred feet up with your eagle eyes you'd be able to see everything with no problem okay uh do you let salt down on the ground or keep him perched up there with you uh, i'll come down and okay. i'll come off salt she flies you down towards where gideon zania and team have gathered a few uh, bits of uh, logs and twigs and stuff to create a small campfire here for the night for dropping you down as the rainbow eagle flies itself back up towards the branch. With that, that was so much fun. I think that's a solid place to cause a little bit of a break. It is 9.04. How about we come back at 9.10, so six minutes from now. Does that work for everybody? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. If you haven't done so yet, do exclamation point blood. However, I am reading in the chat. Is the giveaway broken? I thought we got it working. Looks I, like it's working on my end. I've okay. I've seen that it's working. If you haven't done it, make sure you do the exclamation point blood. It worked yeah. earlier. Um, if make not, sure we'll try and figure that out. Following the, the channel as well, if it doesn't work for you. Yeah. True. Follow the channel, that. and only one ticket per per entry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You Sounds might have good. already got it. Let's call it a break. We'll do the giveaway when we get back and we will continue from there. So we'll see you all in about five, six minutes. Right. (laughs) 
Welcome back from the break, everybody. We've realized that there are bot issues for the giveaway. Um, that's apparently a whole Streamlabs thing. That's not just our bot. There's currently down right now. So stick around. We have another giveaway coming. We're just going to try and continue it from there. Uh, so just hold on. We will do the giveaway as soon as the bot is working. If not, we will take the names at the end and enter them into a random giveaway twice because uh, it's still collecting names. It's just not allowing us to do anything with them. So. And also with that, uh, if it doesn't allow us to do the next giveaway, we can do it in the Discord. Yeah, exactly. So worst Which case scenario, we'll just, we'll just join the Red Wagon in Discord. Okay. Join the Discord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best pun of the night. I did, oh, I didn't even hear it. What, what was the fun? No, I'm just saying we give it to the best part of the night. Oh, yes. Now that's a giveaway. Ooh. Bobo is not allowed to enter. Bobo, Alex, and I can't. We're not allowed. Uh, it'd be too easy. Right. Excuse you. I am also a pun queen. <laughs> Look, there's only fair one enough, pun enough. queen here, and it's Jackie. With a, with a, It took six episodes to come up with the first pun. It was great. Yeah, but it, <laughs> but it was primo, you know. <laughs> it was a drop and a half. <laughs> Right, remember the first giveaway is still... Oh, that's not it. I used the wrong image there. The first giveaway uh, is the rainbow set of endless metal dice from Kakapopo TCG. The second giveaway is... And if it even makes more sense that the second giveaway may happen on the Discord, uh, is that I will be designing an NPC with somebody like Castagon or a random banana salesman or someone who rules over hell. Whatever we want it to be, we'll talk and make it happen uh, and get you as an NPC into the game. I will still have to make the choices for the NPC, but you will help me design them and get them kind of in there. So don't be mad if eventually they kill a party member and that's your fault. Hey, you know what? You can uh, hold your hands up high and say, not truly my fault. But, right, so... We remember Robert's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Higher yeah. low, guys. <laughs> we remember Arakai. What a good guy he was. Poor one out for one's Arakai homie. <laughs> right, uh, so let's continue from there. Uh, where we last stopped, uh, Gideon, Zania team were setting up a fire. Salt just got dropped off by Blossom, as Blossom is currently up uh, at watch on top of the uh, little perch there. Um, if we're going for a full rest, you're getting a fire going, planning on just kind of watching yourselves here what are we doing during this rest if there's anything you want to do if not if we're just going for full rest i need watch order uh wow. while we're discovering watch order i am pasting the link to the discord that you can join right now i'll put it in multiple times for the rest of the evening is that for free <laughs> dang it you beat me <laughs> <to> <laughs> <laughs> hold on Enter the giveaway now. Enter the giveaway now. Do it. Go. Goes it back up? Go, 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 go. Do actually much? Okay, yeah. We'll do the giveaway now. It ends in 25 seconds. You have literally 25 seconds to do this. <laughs> Plus the 20 second delay. Yeah, give them just a little bit longer since other people have not done it. It's on a timer. Oh, it, 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 is, it is. It is. Okay, it is 20 seconds. 14 seconds. Go, 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 go. Ten go, go, Jakey, go. Okay. With your fat fit fun. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, four, three. Two, Two, one. All right, giveaway's done. Okay, giveaway's it's literally done. a timer. <laughs> All right, I can pick a winner if we'd like. Yeah, I want to pick a winner. I want to know who's winning some rainbow dice. Do it. Lucas Bat. Lucas Bat. Lucas Bat. Congratulations, Lucas Bat. Hey, you win yourself this beautiful set of rainbow metal endless dice from the Kakapopo TCG. They are meant to be painted like miniatures if you prime them. However, that seems like an absolute waste for something that pretty. So do with them what you want. But congratulations, Lucas Bat. Uh, make All sure right, you the, reply. The new giveaway is going. Can someone do exclamation mark blood? Make sure to make sure we're getting in. I'd love to. Hey, there we go. MVP. It's open. The next giveaway is open. Look at it. All happening now. Hashtag Drew's fault. Hashtag Drew fixed. Yeah. Drew is a cutie. Hashtag Drew is a cutie. Hashtag Drew is a cutie. There we go. We gotta give it. Gotta give him credit where credit's due. Thank you. I deserve Look this. <laughs> Look at that cute boy. I just I, I earned this. You know, I worked hard. <laughs> right. Uh. So awesome. Congratulations, Lucas Bat. Now we will continue. Uh, is there anything anybody wants to be doing currently uh, before you're planning to take a rest? Uh, I can take first watch break. I'll uh, take I'll, first watch I'll with you. Oh, oh never mind. I'm already up taking a watch in the trees. Yeah, I was going to so say. Thought... <laughs> I'm doing it. Then in that um, case, uh, team will tell Zania to go to sleep. <laughs> and team will stay up. 
But I, I, I do not have too. I do not have spells that uh, I need to rest for. I am good to go. Oh. I rely oh. more on this, and he pulls out the bow, and he's like, "What do do do?" Okay, thank you. He makes do 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 sounds, but doesn't pull it back because that's yeah. bad for a bow. <laughs> oh, it's um. It's a space cowboy sound. <laughs> it's it's, beep, 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 beep. it's wonderful to have you back in um the Formula team, and not a. It's, ni- it's nice to have you not drunk. I think <laughs> we can actually thank Salt for that. Surprisingly. Good job, Salt. Um, okay, go. everybody, go to sleep. Blossom up in tree. Yeah. You you um, kind of say, but then realize she's very far away and are gonna have to yell because she's like. 100 feet up. I'm not going to yell. <laughs> um, I know that the wild shape only lasts for a few hours, so I'll say probably before it runs out, I'll come back down, turn back into the halfling, and do the rest of the watch routine <gasps> before going to sleep. What were you wild shaped as? I was a miniature giant eagle, so eagle, but oh, with the stats. Dope. It's awesome. Yeah, it was like a big eagle, but oh, smaller. Yeah. But unlike can, the elephant, can team that's hold up his arm like this? Do you want? It? Do you want? It? And team's like, do you want to? Do you want to land on it? <laughs> you want me to land on your arm and then turn back into it? She's a not halfling? a falcon, so her uh, instincts do not say to land on your arm. Uh, <laughs> team's just very excited about this prospect. <laughs> um, he puts down his arm. Oh, was, okay. Um, as she's coming down, I guess, at the end of her watch then, I'll say that she, she goes onto your shoulders, <gasps> and then she'll, like, hop down your arm, and then turn back into the tiefling sitting next to you. And um, ha- tiefling, halfling sitting next to you. That was so badass. So, Blossom, you're gonna join him at the camp then? Uh, yeah, I'll stay up top for, like, another hour, and then just as my wild shape is running out, I'll cop down. Okay. So I'll, I'll be up there for an hour, watching the elephant. Uh, making sure he's not coming this way, and then I'll pop down and um, do Excuse whatever. me, I'm sorry, there's an elephant? <laughs> oh, did you miss that? Yeah, you did. So, <laughs> Blossom and Salt <laughs> flew up me? above the trees, uh, and in between, about 30 miles away, where the large dead tree <clears throat> lays on the grassy hill, even though the grassy hill is just the top of the trees, uh, Blossom could see some of the trees, yes, the big, tall, mile tall, and very, very thick trees swaying wow. as if something's moving through them as she recognizes, ah, there must be an elephant in between our path. That's not good. Um, and has informed the group of that. Mm-hmm. I'm fixing it. Thank you for calling it out. Wow, the root wagon <laughs> in. <laughs> Everybody join us at the root wagon in. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Drew's fault. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You want to say it's Drew's fault? All right, here we go. How about that? It's the that? blue cart tavern now. <laughs> Wed wagon in uwu. Uwu. Oh my god. Uwu wagon in. <laughs> whoopsie whoopsie. Right. I did a fucky wacky. <laughs> <laughs> GFY. <laughs> what? <are> you... <laughs> right. Yeah, team definitely deserves one for that. Yeah, team does. Wow, team. <laughs> right. Uh, so, as uh, first up, Blossom, you're at watch with team, kind of at the same time. Who's second, third, fourth? Who's coming afterwards? Oh, follow or nobody? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You can say nobody. That's fine. Give me nobody on watch. So, 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 somebody should wake up. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll wake up. Anything else for me to take a full rest is all I'm really Yeah, care. I mean, you still get your rest when you're on watch. It's just light activity. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will do it. Okay. Sounds good. Zania followed. Gideon, Salt, are you taking a watch at all? I'm already asleep. Okay. Gideon's down to take a, take a watch. Okay. Um, so we'll do it in three. Yeah, so. Gideon does that thing at the beginning. He's instinctually setting his sleeping bag like almost like a little out of the camp perimeter. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Oh, so you're going to be a little further away? Just a little bit. Just just a touch just because like that's Gideon's like headspace kind of thing. Like he's he's welcome, but he's still processing all this. So yeah, he's going to sleep a little on the outside. Gotcha. 
I wanted to say as Blossom goes to sleep, she like gathers a whole bunch of leaves and makes herself like a tiny little nest and then she just curls up right in the middle of it and sleeps like that. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> right. So, Blossom, you are currently up in the branch with team. Zania, Gideon, Salt, asleep. You exhausted. It has been just a long, long day. Uh, you, you, The sleep could not come soon enough, let me tell you. As... You're sitting there on the branch, Blossom. You're watching out before. You see something flying your way at incredible speeds before you kind of roll your eyes recognizing this bird. Before an eagle in a similar style to you, except its feathers black on the top, it lands on the perch next to you before shape-shifting kind of back into a halfling, much like your own uh, the, with kind of blueberry dyed hair where yours is kind of raspberry dyed, uh, blueberry dyed hair that's short and spiky at the top. A uh, male halfling who sits there with rosy red cheeks looks over at you. You recognize Sprig, good friend of yours, uh, back from the uh, what uh, tribe that you're from. You were meant to meet up with him. You totally forgot. <laughs> You're helping these strangers, and you absolutely forgot that you were both going to be grabbing the berries and heading back uh, as Sprig lands on the branch and looks over at you and says, Blossom, what? I. We were supposed to be back ages ago. Uh. Um. Still in eagle form, so she's just like doing a shuffle away from him, like I'm guilty and I'm not gonna admit it, and just shifty eyes like away, like whoops. So he kind of leans over the branches. He says, "Who, who, who are those people? They're in such strange clothes, and why do they wrap themselves in bags?" And then still, in, I don't know if they speaking with animal or anything because i can understand them just Yo, fine but i just did, yeah. my head and i'm just like a fellow I, I don't know. yeah i don't i don't know they they just here they're trying to find somebody i'm just helping and i completely forgot about the berries oh my god they squished the berries they squished they squished the berries how mm. how are we going to feed the little ones without your berries I could, I could make good berries tomorrow. Look, Puck's gonna be so mad. Ah. Oh, are you? Are, wait, are you? You're coming back tomorrow then? What? Are, are you just watching over them? What's going on? As wait, you're basically wait. ah back and forth to him as he's talking to you up there. Uh, they, they. Well, um, I, I, I kind of said that I would take them to the the really big tree. You know, like the dead one. Like on the hill, um, cause that's apparently where their friend is. Um, we're mad. I said that, that I would take them, and I didn't know. And I don't know what I'm doing now. Uh, oh, oh my god! If you're headed to the dead tree, you're not gonna be back for a long time. If they have to walk on legs, this. Oh, okay. I, I was gonna brag. I was gonna show off uh, as he pulls out uh, his pouch. He has just a bundle of blueberries that he has, uh, which you know to not actually be blueberries of like what we recognize to be in the real world. They're like small apples, but they function the same way as blueberries. Uh, as he holds them up, he says, I didn't want to brag, but I do have enough for everyone. I wanted to show you up when we get back, but if you're going to be gone, I'll have to just make up your effort. I why are you helping them? What they're doing here? And they're not from here, I don't think. So, like, I don't know. I just said that I would, and now I am, and I don't know what I'm doing anymore. You're far too kind to strangers, Blossom. It's dangerous folk could be around these parts. Are they... Yeah. Wait. I can't see from here. You, You have the eyes currently. Are they... They're not Sylvan, are they? No. Okay. Um. All right. Be careful. I don't know to I know that's. I'm glad that you don't know them. They're not trustworthy. All right. Just come back soon. I'll be on the lookout. What would you? What do you want me to tell the tribe? <clears throat> uh. I don't know. You make 
make something up. I don't. You. I just. Mm. Fine. You know what? I will make something up. I'll say whatever I want before he turns into a small little dove uh, and looks at you and kind of does like a little hop back and forth on the branch. I like to screech at him like, no! As you, ah! like a big eagle, as he like, ah, jumps and flies away <laughs> off into the forest uh, back where he came. Uh, team, you look up uh, as you hear the eagle cry out and see a dove fly off in the distance. I actually kind of lurch forward a second and say, oh, the horses, they are all going to die. And then a small smile <laughs> crawls on his face. <laughs> he says, ha, okay. Yes, okay. for stables, uh, do not feed horses ever. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Before, yeah, you're kind of sitting there just twiddling your thumbs before <gasps> the thought enters your mind and you just smile and lean back and give Atta a pet like, good boy. <laughs> 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 right. Blossom, throughout the rest of your watch, you eventually you get tired of sitting up on the perch. It, it takes energy to make sure that you don't fall off when you're in eagle form before you glide back down to team and kind of flap before landing on the ground in front of him reverting to your normal self next to this warm fire. You were up there for maybe about two, three hours, no real activity. Uh, Zania told you all to wake her up when it were uh, when you were done for watch. It's up to you. Do you wake her up? Let her go on her watch? I, I was like building that tiny little leaf nest because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I don't want to wake up a stranger in case she hits me. So <laughs> I'm just going to go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> and I, I leave it to team. <laughs> Blossom quickly pulls off a bunch of tiny leaves, all about hand size, and makes essentially a small nest for her, very akin to the clothing that she's wearing. Walking by, you would almost miss her if you weren't actively looking for something on the ground. Mm. Team, you gonna wake Zania up? Um, I give it a little bit longer. Uh, I I would like to go into maybe second watch. Okay, sounds good. Um, you're, you're not nearly as hurt uh, as Zania, so you want to try and give her more rest, uh, if you possibly can. Your eyes start if to... If I start, yeah, I was going to say, if I start, like, where I'm falling, actively falling asleep, I'll wake someone up. Yeah, you're not used to having to sleep again, so eventually, once it starts coming on, it just... Ugh. You're about halfway through second watch before you got to wake somebody else up, or else y'all are going to be left here defenseless. So you wake oh. Zinnia up. Uh, Ata wakes Zinnia up with puppy kisses. Oh, Zinnia, you're laying there on the ground before a small dog with its rough tongue licks uh, your face before uh, you're greeted to the sight, which briefly in your kind of sleepiness, you're not used to seeing Ata with skin. So you kind of freak for just a second. Ata backs away before you go, oh, God, uh, and pet Ata with no real <laughs> reservations. Once you recognize what it is and it kind of clicks in your head or you see hey. team rubbing his eyes hey Otta. Mm, thanks that was really cute Not, i can actually get used to that um she'll look at the two sons like i uh, i can't tell if time has passed but i'm assuming it's my turn uh yes okay i i i am feeling what they call sleepy and team's just gonna boom. <laughs> the oh, ghost okay. asleep before he puts his head on a nearby log. Doesn't bother with a blanket, just kind of conks out to the side. Kind of fold my wing over myself. Yeah. I'll take my blanket and I'll put it on top of him since I don't need it anymore. Oh. Zania goes over, covers team up. Ada kind of follows you around. Ada, being a familiar, doesn't really need sleep, so just kind of follows you around since there's somebody up for him to at least hang out with. Uh, Zania, while you're chilling there alone, roll me a perception check. 16 plus 6, 22. 22. Sounds good. This forest is filled with noises that you are absolutely unfamiliar with. What you would normally hear that kind of sounds like monkeys off in the distance, that kind of typical like ambient forest, like <laughs> just kind of like flying uh, along. You hear them what sounds like moving, almost like you could hear the Doppler effect happen. You hear the, like, <laughs> as it flies, like, nearby. You kind of look around and briefly kind of 
you can you ready yourself and you kind of grab your spear uh, and look around. You hear some rustling up in the trees above before it seems to go away from where you're at. You look over to the side and the rustling kind of follows itself away. You can barely make out what looks to be something swinging between the two trees above you, but it seems to be heading away from your direction. Hey, Ada, um, I don't know if you can understand me. You used to before. I don't know if you can. You probably can. Um, tell me keep an eye out. Uh, this place is weird and I'm not used to it. <laughs> Just kind of gives you a little... I'm going to assume that means yes. You hear the same exact sound. So if it meant yes, it meant yes twice. Or if it was no, it meant no twice. Thanks, Otto. And I'll pat him on and scratch on the ear like Blossom showed me. As he kind of reacts, eventually you kind of, you hold your spear close to you, just kind of out as you sit and watch just in this unfamiliar place before eventually after a few hours, you think, all right, time to wake Gideon up. Let him have a watch. Give Salt a good night rest. He's missed his sister. He he needs the, needs the sleep here if he's going to be useful in the morning where you go wake Gideon up. Gideon um, sees him. Oh yeah, how do you wake him up? Hey, G Gideon. I try to be loud at first. G Gideon. Um, mm, I have a feeling that he doesn't like to be startled awake. I'll just be very loud approaching. And I'll crack some branches on purpose, stepping next to him. Hey, Gideon. <laughs> hey, Gideon. Mm -hmm. Roll me. A D8. Oh, no. A D8. Or no, it's D10, isn't it? Am I thinking incorrectly for what I know you have? Oh, no. It is a D8. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Uh, yeah, it's a D8. Um, I rolled. I actually rolled a 7. Okay. <laughs> Zania, you go over to Gideon, who is sound asleep as you're like, Gideon. I Gideon. Gideon. <laughs> before you kind of like kick him and he just kind of rolls a little bit I would not kick him I would get a like a stick and poke him probably I, I didn't mean like the... kick but uh -oh. like kind of shove him a little bit with your foot just to kind of uh, nudge him and wake him up <laughs> not like get up <laughs> <laughs> if so then Zinni is a far different kick, kick yeah. uh oh <laughs> uh, karma as you slam down uh, yeah you, you kind of nudge him but he doesn't seem to react to you pushing on him oh. this is kind of getting worrying at this point oh hey Gideon I kind of pick up one of his arms and drop it it falls limp <laughs> at the side oh uh, hey and I'll try to like brush some of his poofy hair out of the way uh, Gideon and I kind of like get his face to make sure he's okay like check his face out he has one uh, a bit of his tongue hanging out on the right side he's drooling very heavily <laughs> yeah exactly like that but he's he's breathing oh okay he's okay he's hey hello roll a medicine check oh, oh no <laughs> oh no you're a cleric <laughs> I know, I know, but okay, okay, this is I good. Twenty-two. Diagnose you with dead. But I'm a typist cleric. <laughs> What'd you get? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. He's fine? Question mark. Okay. He's just sleeping. You should be able to wake him up. Okay. Um. Hello. Uh, she'll get probably get her flask out. Is there okay? Is there water? I'd rather use fresh water. If there's no fresh water, I'll use my flask. You've got. There's no fresh water around, but you do have flask and water skins. Okay, I'll just get some and I'll... Hey, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to make sure you're okay, too. And I'll open it and pour it on his face just a little bit. You pour just a little bit, and like a heavy rainfall, it just kind of covers him. And now uh, the front of his brow is soaking. It, it very much just kind of looks like he went on a, like a very hard run uh, as the front of him is just kind of covered in water. But Gideon is not waking up oh maybe he's just a really heavy sleeper um at this point i think she won't think it's worth the issue like okay. 
Will she still get a full rest if she just takes watch a second yeah, time? You'll be. It'll be one of those days where you're like kind of sleepy, but if the adrenaline kicked in, you'd be all right. All right. I'll just okay, and then she'll get her her cloak and kind of <laughs> clean his face off, wipe some of the water off. Now it very much looks like somebody just took a rag to, and his hair's kind of all like <laughs> poofed up in a direct. He's got a cow lick on the front of his face now with his big poofy hair. His bangs are just off at this point. <laughs> No, he. I mean, he's not you see why he has time. bangs? That dude has a forehead for days. I would know. Oh, no. Uh, he <laughs> he won't know it's me. It's fine, and I'll try my best to fix it. But I kind of just grow up, and I'll I'll take my spot for rest again. As you just kind of sit back, holding the spear. Since you're at his watch, roll me another perception. At sure. disadvantage, since you've been up for a little bit now. That is a six and an eight, but. 12. 12. Beautiful. Right. As you're sitting there for a while, you kind of just get focused in one direction. It's so hard to find how time passes. So with Ada sitting there, you eventually just kind of, All right, let's play a game. We just you, you grab a small stick and hope that Otto will play fetch, uh, trying to distract yourself. And he absolutely does. Uh, you throw it, he grabs it, and he runs back. He's got that panting. <gasps> Uh, as you grab another one, this time he can fly, so you try and yeet it really far in the sky, and he flies up and grabs it and returns back. Playing catch with a flying creature is absolutely awesome. You, you grab it again, you throw it one more time, <laughs> comes back, awesome. Uh, this is, uh, you spend a solid hour playing catch with Atta. This is just neato, <laughs> uh, it, it being able to play with a creature like this. But, you know, time's passed. It's probably about time to wake people up. Okay, Ada, that was really cute, and I'll get more scratches. Um, you want to help uh, wake everyone else up? I'm sure they would appreciate your your cuteness more than my uh, morning breath, you know? As you say that, uh, he immediately goes over and jumps on Salt and does one of those like dog things where he like, pushes on you, almost like it's doing CPR to wake oh. Salt up. Hold on. Um, my tail instinctively goes around the neck of Atta. Oof. Right. As Atta flies over to go and do the, like, push it awake thing, suddenly, Zania, you see Salt's tail begin to strangle Atta. Hey, 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 hey. And I run over and try to oh. untangle and pull up her. As you oh. roll me a strength check, Zania. Salt. Oh, that's a nat one. You yell salt as you're trying to pull this tail off him. It is, this is like a tight collar. You can't get this thing off. You hear Atta kind of whimpering the, <laughs> as if like the chain is being too, pulled too tight as the tail of salt is around Atta. Salt, salt. We just we kind got of a bat. wake up and help pull the tail apart. <sighs> salt, you immediately, oh, as you kind of have consciousness, you have a little bit more control over this tail as you pull it off Atta. Atta kind of does that. <laughs> and kind of runs away and slams into team just like trying to get near something comfort comforting as team you wake up and see Atta kind of uh crying uh like a dog does after again like if you stepped on its foot uh before uh Atta wakes you up and is looking over at salt who's holding his tail like a rope this is enough commotion to wake you gideon and blossom up as well as zania stands uh next to salt both of them grabbing salt's tail uh, and Atta kind of just Screaming back over towards team. What happened? Salt. Uh, it was instinctual, but I don't blame him. But his tail came out, and it, I think Ada surprised him. Ada just kind of barks and uh, uh, kind of reacts, but team, you hear Ada be like, Oh, uh, uh, Salt tried to kill me. He took his tail and wrapped it right around my neck. There was nothing I could do. Did he do it on purpose? I don't, I don't know. It it was really tight. Salt, can you apologize to Otta? Of course, of course. Uh, and I sort of gesture Otta to come over. I walk with Otta over to you, Salt. Otta kind of does that coward low walk towards um, you. As Otta gets really close, my tail sort of flicks a little bit and then goes down, and I give Otta a big hug. Ada kind of jerks away a little bit before you go over and hug it, and he kind of scrambles away before okay, realizing no. you have no malicious intent as you pet its back. Kind of, I will good. Up whisper in his ear. Are you okay? Say again. 
I'll whisper in his ear, are you a doppelganger? And then finish the hug. As uh, Ada kind of kind of rears back, team, you hear, uh, are you a uh, what now? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm just glad I did not have to cut off any tails today. Okay. This I team just, stretches. Let's start our day. Do you say that out loud, team? I do. <laughs> oh, my tail shoots back up for a second. <laughs> kind of like a question, like a cobra ready to strike behind you. Exactly. All of you are awake and see the scene happening. What are you doing? Jesus. <laughs> Waiting for that one. They're still sleeping by the <laughs> things. Oh. I love it. I love it. That was great. Uh. That was perfect. I want to give you a GFY. You know I do, both of you. But it was too good and too timed well. I can't wait, I'm, do I'm it. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Oh, wait. Here's our Jake. Sorry. Here you go. Here. Take it back. Take it back. Oh, 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 thank take it you. back. Okay, for the second time, <laughs> you do both earn a GFY. You didn't with the first one, but you did it again. You know you earned it. Hydrate or dihydrate. Hydrate or dihydrate. <laughs> also, I was going to say, um, the, you said the commotion woke everyone up. What hour in our rest are we at? Now you're at the full eight hours. This is oh, at okay. the full rest this happens, because that was when Zania was going to wake everybody up. Rad. What happened? Like, Blossom's got sleepy brain. She, she like, didn't comprehend half of what was said. So she's like, well, what happened? That was miscommunication in the morning. Good morning. Oh, okay. And she just sits there and blinks, kind of like um the little girl does and wants to zinc. Oh. <laughs> 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 Gideon's rolling up his Ooh, sleeping right? bag and just like humming as if nothing's wrong right now because he missed the first bit. <clears throat> as uh, everyone kind of gathers themselves. How, how oh, moist shit. is Gideon? <laughs> oh, Gideon's oh, always sorry. moist, but uh, <laughs> very moist. <laughs> his face is oh, quite no. dry after you wiped it off. It just kind of looks okay. like somebody who sweated a few hours ago. Okay. Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just miscommunication. People react a certain way when they get woken up. No big deal. Shall we find summer? Yes, I think we should. I think that. Everybody be feel good, relaxed, up and at them. Yeah, yeah. I'll be good. Okay. Gideon um, gives a thumbs up. Blossom, before I forget, is there like sources of water or food that are safe to eat around here, or should I prepare for? situations where we won't stuff around do i need to make a roll to say where you would know that yeah i mean it's a forest there's water sources but you want to be the one to tell them what's a safe water source and not because there are large differences between safe and unsafe water sources in the fae mm -hmm. i want to make sure i'm getting to them to safe water and not bad water <laughs> Right. You basically conver convey to them, like, there's water, just ask me before you drink it. Um, okay. I just want to make sure. And I can point out the good berries, because the good berries are good. <laughs> that uh, that sounds great for breakfast. Pick some berries along the way. I um, also, uh, last time when I used to uh, create food and water, um, I saved some things and some rations. Uh, so if you need any food, water, I have extra um, I don't have the spell prepared today, but uh, I could do it again tomorrow. But uh, I'm just going to like offer because I've cast it twice so far and it creates 24 hours worth of food and like something like a ridiculous amount of water. So I'm assuming Gideon has collected some of it for sake of travel, just as habit. Did you collect to go food since you were magically whisked away and weren't expecting to be to go? I think the first time I, I would have when we were with the horses and stuff. Okay. So. We'll say you have some, but not from when you were there yeah. at the party that night, since you were kind of taken away. Probably enough for this breakfast, but that'd be about it. Cool. Yeah. And then Gideon just shows he has like a couple rations here, here and there and an extra water skin. What are your rations that you're giving them? Uh, the things that Gideon probably grabbed from like the first time are like probably just like some cured meat, like grapes, like cheeses, like little 
little things that you could just like fold up into a napkin in little parcels, just like small comfort foods here and there. As um, Gideon not, non perishable begins passing out uh, a lot of these foods to everybody, saying like, "Yeah, here, have a good breakfast. It's important, most important meal of the day." Uh, as you uh, hand it off to everyone, Blossom, are you a vegetarian? Being that you're a druid, okay. Yeah. Uh, you tell me if it's concerning or not that he seems to have jerked and smoked meats uh, as he hands them to you, but he also hands you these weird purple fruits that look to be like mini blueberries. <laughs> this is odd. They're grapes, uh, but they look to be like ro- a little little aged mini blueberries, but also some cheeses. You're familiar with those, but it's yellow, which is strange. Ooh. Um... She'll grab one of the berries, but then just kind of put the food back down and, like, kind of just shuffle it away from her. As She's you, also just like, I, I don't know. You kind of kick it away, but pop a grape or two in your mouth. You're like, oh, these are actually pretty good, very sweet. Uh, before Atta, like a scavenger jackal that he is, comes over and grabs the uh, <laughs> jerky uh, and the mm-hmm. uh, cheeses and just goes to town. Eating that cheese, uh, luckily Atta does not have to poop uh, or it would be a problem later. <laughs> As he does that, he's like right in front of me. She just like ruffles his little head and she goes, Okay, it's your food now. Um, I was gonna say she'd probably wanna like run off to like the like and find some berries and come back if they wanted to have some of those. Okay. But everybody Yeah, well she'll do that anyway. Cool. As y'all are kind of gathering yourselves, getting ready to go, team, you're putting your sword and your shield back on, you put your bow and your quib. <laughs> Where are your arrows? What? I don't. Where are my arrows? They salt. No arrows in your quiver. Is there there any arrows in my arrows? So you check just in case. Uh, Sometimes you forget what you do, but you don't see any arrows. You don't remember grabbing any arrows. No team. I have this, and I pull out um, what looks like a little rabbit's tail, and hand it over if he wants it. (laughs) Rabbit's Mm -hmm. tail, like the spray. He's like, here you go. Uh, no, no, thank you. Okay, okay. Put it back in my pocket. I guess I will have to make some more. Hopefully I have some materials to make. Must have fallen I off have... whenever you fell out of the sky. Blossom? Some arrows. If you, if you want arrows, I have some. Alright, that would be fantastic. Um, and I... I mean, she would have had them on her back this whole time. But like, yeah, she just like... Yeah, you can take them if you want. I don't know. I think we'll need them. I I, I appreciate Blossom, you hand him a cordon of arrows. About 20 arrows, team, that you can have. Salt, I apologize for accusing you. But with a track record of borrowing. I haven't borrowed anything from you. You borrowed my rib once. (laughs) Blossom, that that must be a weird turn of phrase. She just has, like, Blossom has a concerned look on her face, like, how would you give someone your rib? You've heard of ribbing somebody? Maybe he's talking about a joke. Maybe. (laughs) Right. Uh, (laughs) As you gather the rest of your stuff, north is where you're supposed to be headed. Everybody heading north, or what are we doing? Yeah, we'll head on north. Blossom, you look up. uh, Those of you who are still not familiar with the area, you... You know, like everything looks the same. Even after having sleep, you kind of have forgotten where you are. But Blossom, you're like, yeah, I mean, that tree there, obviously. And you see you kind of head back towards the north, uh, directing everyone being as this is your homeland. You don't need to roll survival for that one at all. Um, You begin leading everyone to the north. Is the plan to try and get all the way to the dead tree today? Uh make it as far as we go i guess okay based on the distance you know if you want to get there today you're gonna have to kind of hustle it as you go um so we gotta gotta be fast if we want to get there today (gasps) i'm fast or or it'll take like a couple days let's go okay okay let's go let's go let's go and yeah she just runs off I continue As... to stay next to Blossom, telling her stories, running up trees, jumping across them, going, look, look what I can do. Blossom begins uh, going at a small jog, uh, which being that she's a halfling, 
all of you can kind of do like a fast walk to keep up with uh, Blossom. Her gotta let, you know, really go is like, all right, we just kind of walk a little quickly uh, before Salt being how quick you are. Yeah, you're like running up and down trees and coming back by as you're uh, going with her along the pathway here. Um, but Blossom, if you keep at this pace, it's going to be tiring, uh, but you'll be able to get there probably before you'd need another rest. Uh, you never have gone this far out before to the north. You normally travel south. That's the safer lands for sure. It's known to be Sylvans yeah. to the north, and that can be quite scary. Very territorial no. race. Yeah, let's go. We're going. Great. Hey, uh, hey, Sol. Just curious, what's your uh, what's your walking speed? Twelve anteaters. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. About thirty-five foot. Oh, sweet. I'm actually faster than salt. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, the only thing that makes me, I think it makes me faster is, is you can, can climb dash. up walls and stuff like that. Dashes, well. yeah, yeah. True, oh, yeah, true, true, true. If true. you're faster normally, but if salt needed to leg it, since yeah, he's yeah, familiar okay, with yeah, legging yeah, nah. it, <laughs> salt's gone. Yeah, exactly. Um, as y'all are going towards the north. You're going to travel for quite a few hours. You're going to see a lot of things that you're not used to seeing. Blossom, being that you're familiar with the area, I need you to roll me a survival check. Mm-hmm. Dropping your message, Ryan. Got it. 18? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. As you're going, at some point, it looks to be a large bunch of bushes uh, in front of your pathway before you kind of stop everybody and say w we should go around as everyone looks and you're like no we could just go through the bushes it's the most direct in the bushes? route blossom you're familiar with these creatures marlboros they're whew, they look like bushes but if they turn around their mouths are twice as big as team if you're at all familiar with the final fantasy landscape and world it's a marlboro from there it's literally a tanglewood of vines and giant mouths it's basically a beholder if it were tangela from pokemon uh it's a it's a rough business uh, and seeing a pack of them okay we want to make sure we go around them so it's going to take you a bit of time to go around them or if you want to try and stealth to kind of keep a little bit closer and hopefully avoid them you can do that too but you're kind of making the call here for the group She's not that great stealth wise, so she wants to go around and just make sure that nobody gets attacked by them anyway. Because she doesn't like them. And she's like, well, they're doing what they're doing, so let's go around them. As you all look, you're like, uh, it's just a bush. Do you explain to them what it is or just kind of, nope, let, let's go around? Uh, they are not bushes. They are monsters. We do not like them. Let's go around, 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 around. Like, she's just like, this way, this way, this way, this way. <laughs> like, huddling children just like, this yeah, way. Like, come on, come on, guys. You're like, you all follow I mean, I, Yeah, I mean, around, around, I just around. watched a mild tall tree bend down to look at someone. I mean, this this is a place I have never been. Uh, weird shit always happens, I suppose. Zania, Gideon? Yeah, I'll listen to the native. Gideon, trust your experience. Sounds good. You're all going to go around the long way, but Blossom, you know, if you want to try and make it tonight, that means you're going to have to hustle a little, little bit more because to be safe from these things, their den could be anywhere around here. You're going to have to go a little ways around. As such, if you want to book it to get there, now you're going to have to be almost running with them actually jogging this time. Y'all are going to probably be a little exhausted by the time you get to this location uh, at the end of the day. Uh, everybody or me in particular? Everyone, everyone. Okay. Um, just to make up speed as well, um, she's going to use a wild shape and, um, turn into a lion. Mm. Um, also a small version, so like a, a cub, but starts <laughs> with a lion. But just so she can go a little faster, because she's like, okay, I'm, I'm a little slower than these, than these guys. You're kind of holding so, her back, you feel. She's like, okay, I'll, I'll try and speed things up, and so she turns into a lion. So she has to... 50 feet of movement, so she's a bit faster now. 
Blossom is barely bigger than Atta is, but it looks like a full-blown lion just taking the corner and dragging with the transform tool, making it a little bit smaller uh, as uh, she begins running. It's barely the size of a dog, but the mane is still uh, quite large. Uh, again, being that it is a fey lion, the mane in itself, uh, the lion is this really, really dark oak color, but the mane is this incredibly, incredibly bright pink with the eyes of this lion shining a really fluorescent blue, almost seeming to glow in the daylight uh, as you all track and go around. This time, you all have to kind of jog a little bit faster, almost run to keep up with Blossom as you're going around this area here, uh, no longer being tied back by the halfling's speed. As such, uh, you recognize that it is probably a very good call to go around these things. As you're doing so, you eventually see, like, okay... Uh, don't see any signs of them. Let's get back on course and you head back towards uh, what is essentially a beeline towards the log going forward. As you're traveling here, you come across a small, almost a spring in the ground, a, 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 a pond uh, of bright pink uh, and blue water that seems to move itself around and almost be stamped into the ground. You know those like 80s dens where there's like a ledge but then like the seats are down inside the den there? It's very much like that. There's this small cliff uh, that's maybe four feet tall, not a cliff you all have to worry about, a small little ledge uh, that leads down into this extremely circular uh, divot in the ground where this pond or pool sits, where all the grass is laid down there. Blossom, again, you're familiar with this area. Roll me a nature check. Again, you can use int or wisdom. How wide is the pool? The pool, or the pond itself is maybe about 40 feet across. It's kind of oblong. It's in a strange shape. It's not quite circular. Uh, the whole round area, though, is maybe about 100 feet in diameter. As a 12. 12. Blossom, you're not entirely sure what this water source is from. As such, when you're not 100% sure, sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry, but also fresh water is, you know, finding it in a pond like this is rare. It's so pretty. It is. She doesn't trust it, so she's just like... She she stays like a couple feet away from it, just like as a because she's as a lion, she can't say anything. So she's just like no no no, like just like kind of shaking her head and just stepping back a couple. I just watched her be a lion for the whole time, and I'm like oh, I want to show off, so I'm gonna jump between trees, kind of over the pool, and do some somersaults and everything. Somersault. Ah. Uh, so you're gonna jump over it uh, with uh, where? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do over. do some fancy stuff to sort of show off. Beautiful. Uh, as you're kind of trying to like sidetrack and go around it, Blossom, and lead them by, you see the rat creature run up a nearby tree and begin doing very acrobatic-esque uh, stunts, hanging from its tail beneath the tree, flipping and flying over. You're like, um, hey, we're supposed to be going forward uh, in your mind. You're not sure that this is the best place to stop. Uh, but you, it is quite impressive, the feats that he's doing. So roll me an acrobatics check. Easy. Roll a one. Roll a one. I've got an inspiration. That's a one. Ooh. Do you? Oh, shit. I do. You give me plenty. I've only, I've only, got, I've only kept one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try again. Hold on. Are you? Uh. Well. Because you do you have do? a GFY. I know, but you might want to hear what I just rolled again. Ooh, that oh, could be no. a bluff. Alex is a bluffer. He's sus all the time and among... All right, yeah. Well, Are I won't use GFY it. I'll me? save it. I'll, I'll save the GFY. Why? You sure? Are you 100% sure? Yeah, no, no. no. Sure. Okay, well then, I hate to admit it, but I rolled two natural ones. Oh! <laughs> and I'm, I'm finished with three sides. You didn't bluff. Ah, beautiful. Right. Oh, why did I say that? <laughs> Seems like... Uh, hashtag Drew's fault. Uh, as... Hashtag Drew's fault. <laughs> You're running by, all of you are kind of sweaty. You're not really like, ugh. you wish you could stop and take a break uh, before you see Salt run up a nearby tree. One of the quite tall ones over where this uh, little pond is. It's not in that divot. Uh, it is just on a nearby tree before Salt says, hey, hold on, hold on, look at me, look up here. Uh, before you wish you could stop in this water, but seeing that Blossom is not stopping, you don't think you're going to stop. 
But, oh, salt's gonna salt. Childs are gonna do somersaults as uh, salt hangs by his tail. Uh, your tail, once again, betraying you, salt, as you're planning to do one of those twirls where you go around it, fly up, and then catch yourself. Uh, this time, you wrap your tail around it, but with a will of its own, almost, this tail just doesn't grab on to the branch. As you plan to wrap around, you lay yourself back like a trust fall, though there's nothing to catch you on that trust fall. As you fall from this height, as all of you see salt falling towards the pond below, maybe about 60 feet below him. Uh-oh. How fast can I get to him? You're a, a uh, distance away. You could jump and try and catch him if you'd like. Can I do a running leap to try and get him? Oh, yeah, you definitely could. Um. So, yeah, I can have a 10-foot start and then jump up to 25 feet. He's far away, so know that this will be a difficult check, but you definitely can try if both team and Blossom are both going to yeah. try and jump to catch him. Okay. Is it possible uh, for me to give her an extra boost? If you want to just throw the lion? <laughs> I mean, I can try. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds cool. I'm not saying like it's a bad thing. It's the uh, size what of would a I dog. For it, though. Um, let's do a athletics check as a lion. Okay. You have you the lion stats? Yeah, I have lion stats in front of me, and I get to add my proficiency, because druid stuff, right? Yeah, and uh, being that you are being yeeted by a team, uh, you can have advantage on that as team runs. Seeing you going and seeing that you're a beast, probably have a better chance of catching it out of the sky as team. You grab her by the mane as she's like, ah, before she jumps off and kind of uh... aids in the throw. Do you want me to use that GFY? Because that's a nat 20. No, you're giving her advantage. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Good, 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 good. good. Oh, you got a nat 20 anyway? Yeah. Oh, and I haven't given Blossom any GFYs, so okay. Blossom. I don't deserve any. <laughs> I don't deserve any. Ooh. Ooh. Taunt me. Do it. That's a <laughs> as a lion a small one uh, a cat pouncing after a mouse in the sky as salt you fall it seems like you're falling ages you see the pond below you not entirely upset about this as it is water but it's definitely going to hurt as you fall you kind of pull yourself into a ball before you feel a sudden impact uh, as the lion slams into the side of you more rather than like catching you because a lion couldn't more just doing like a gut check against you in the sky causing you to fall out of the way of the pond beneath you but still falling <laughs> to the ground uh at, just at a reduced speed uh -oh. as blossom hits you uh so that's going to be just a less damage than you had planned to uh so that's seven bludgeoning damage as you fall and land on the ground blossom you absolutely knocked him out of the way and with your great Dwarvish-like leap from a dwarf being tossed by Aragorn, <laughs> you land on the other side of the pond as well, no problems. Uh, as you are a cat, you land on your feet. Mm -hmm. So I run over to wherever um, Salt is, because I guess he's over on that side as well. Yeah. And oh. If he's still lying down. I just start nudging him, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm next least... to the water, aren't I? Not too far. Uh, you're uh, uh, in, in that little ledge area, but you're not in the pond. You landed outside of it. Am I, like, within reaching distance? You're about five feet away. Okay, I was, I was going to kind of reach over and sort of splash some water her way as sort of like a defiant, you pushed me over sort of thing. Are you planning to do that? That's what I... If it's close enough, I'd like. I, I, I'd do that. Just go. It's about five Ouch. feet. Yeah, you so could walk like... over there and do that if you'd like. Sure, why not? Great. Uh, Sounds like a thing that Salt would do. Blossom, you're like, <sighs> Zinnia, you look over and see the leap that Blossom made and the style, and you feel a kind of a twinge of kinship uh, in this thing. You can't, you're not entirely sure why. Uh, you've seen something similar, but this is a very, very small, abstract version of a friend you might know. Uh, as Salt, you go over to this kind of pinkish blue pond and you go to like splash some water at Blossom. Blossom, you kind of move away. As, again, you're not sure of the source of this water. Salt, as your hand slaps the water, trying to uh, basically splash water her way, your hand slaps what feels like jelly, not water. You boom, as your hand slaps it, it kind of hurts as if you like, whenever you slap like somebody's hand for a high five too hard, right? And it kind of hurts you, ah, as you pull away. Roll a constitution save. Uh, 
Eight minus one is a seven. Seven. You ah, you pull your hand away and you see that kind of glitter, what mimics fairy fire uh, that you've seen of magic being used from your sister before is kind of stuck to you. It literally looks like glitter is covering your hand in this greenish pink color. How, However, it seems to be making its way up your fur, crawling ah. quickly, climbing its way up the fur. Blossom. Try to shake it off. Uh, you, you've <laughs> seen this before. This is bad. You know exactly what this is. Roll a survival to make sure, though, if okay. he is in a bad way or if this is going to be pretty harmless to him. Um, 24. 24. This is... The ooze coming off of an elephant. The ooze that sticks on its feet. The great pawns that they make as they step through the forest. He's touched it. This is bad. Fey energy is going to try and seep its way into him and mm, turn him into uh -oh. one of those Marlboros. Uh-oh. 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 So I'm already, like... Still heading that way, correct? Yeah, you're nearby on the other side of the pond. Gideon, Zania, what are you doing? Uh, as uh, this lion just kind of rears back and roars uh, in kind of a defiant manner as it looks at Salt. You look at your hand as you see the glitter traveling up your fur, Salt. salt um, can I okay? transform back? Like, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll, 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 it doesn't feel Ryan. bad, does it, Ryan? No, yeah, but it is scary. That's really bad. It's really bad. It's uh, really bad. We, we need to get uh, off of him. We need it to shiny. get off. How, how close to going up the bank are they? Uh, they're on the other side. Again, it's about a hundred foot radius, so you're gonna you'd have to run to get there pretty quickly. Then I will run over that way and go ahead and grab out the scythe. Zania, Gideon. Um, while I see Saul panicking and someone's yelling, uh, oh, this is bad, Gideon starts tracing around his hand, uh, creating, like, another clock form, but this one is going to be opalescent color, um, and Gideon's going to focus on this slime, and I'm going to cast Dispel Magic, so I'm going to burn a third level spell slot. Ooh, I like it. Uh, as you do so, you create this kind of pearlescent look. Team, Zania, what are you doing first as this is happening? Zinni was racking her brain for what she can do, but Gideon is the um, <laughs> better supporter, so she'll let Gideon do his thing. You, you pull out your uh, book to kind of look at a possible solution, as you already see Gideon kind of creating this magical energy as, in his hand, pulling it over. Team, you're running over. You pull the scythe out. Blossom, what are you doing at this time? Um, um, oh, man, I'm just trying to, like, grab him and, like, try and run to the other side with him, so, like, around it. Just so I can get him closer to his friends faster, so so, so it could stop. Like, because she didn't I, prepare anything for this today. She I think also it would... need to clarify that when I say I pulled out the scythe, I have it backwards to where I have the stick end of it outstretched. Okay, <laughs> that is good to know because I was like, oh, cool, he's gonna cut his arm off, and then you know, yeah, good to go. <laughs> Uh, that's where I thought like, you were going here, with that. Here, grab this stick <laughs> kind of deal. Gotcha. Um, as uh, Blossom, you start pulling Salt uh, over towards his friend. Salt, you're getting uh, yanked away by uh, Blossom. Gideon, are you casting Dispel Magic on Salt or the pool or what? I'm going to cast it on... Can I... I guess like Gideon like making with like his passive like sight. Is there anything I can make any connection like arcane wise to salt in the pool like because salt just tapped it and suddenly his arm is glowing um so it, can i like do something like in like on salt particularly like where do i feel like this is originating from i guess would be my question you could roll an arcana check okay oh, you okay, could okay, ask. okay 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 uh, sure. da, 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 da. arcana is only plus three but that's still a 19 19 being that you're unfamiliar with this world, you're not sure if eliminating the source in this pool is a good idea or if what's touching him is going to be what's better. Being, If you knew how this magic came into being, you might be a little bit more you know, willing to try and make an educated guess, but it's going to be kind of a flip of a coin to you. I'm going to cast it on salt with the hope that like it, it just kind of poofs the magic uh off of him because i think i'm more concerned about salt safety than i am a giant puddle right now 
Sounds good. Uh, Blossom, you're pulling them uh, closer. Gideon, as you, what's the range on Dispel Magic? 120 feet. And is it just on a single source or in an area? That's a good question. Um, let me double check. I think this is different magic. than 3-5, which is what Choose I'm one creature, to object, or magical effect within range. Any spell of third level or lower on the target ends. For each spell level of fourth or higher on the target, make an ability check using your spellcasting ability. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. Um, on a successful check, the spell ends. Beautiful. As you see Salt coming closer, uh, Blossom's pulling him. Team's running over with this scythe. Briefly, you have the same thought I do. Like, please don't cut his arm off as you... <laughs> you essentially make a shockwave of magic that goes over towards salt before like an implosion the shockwave surrounds itself towards the glitter on your arm salt you see it go up right towards your shoulder before suddenly this kind of force holds your arm blossom you're holding him and running with him before suddenly he's yanked out of your hand as he's kind of frozen almost in time there as his arm doesn't move the glitter itself begins to float up and away from your arm salt as it's flies away like fairy fire in the sky. Salt. You begin to hear laughter around you. If you've all ever heard the Skull Kid from Majora's Mask, that kind of... That's what it sounds like mm. in Salt's head. You hear it kind of in the distance coming from trees around you before it kind of fades away as you... Gideon, you see the glitter disappear from his nar arm. Blossom, you turn back, seeing the glitter fade. You kind of, you feel oh. a little bit relieved. Oh. Okay, you do, do I think that noise came externally, or do I do I understand it came internally? Roll an intelligence check. Oh. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> Another one. So that's that's six in total. It, you thought Blossom might have done it. Honestly, it's it's very young, almost. Did you just laugh laughter. at me? No. Why would I laugh at you? I I'm don't so know. That's why I'm asking. I'm so glad that your friend got it off of you. It would have been really bad. You would have turned into one of those big bush monster things. Wow. That's. It was pretty though. Yeah, but pretty isn't always good here. But you're good. And she just stands there confused. Like, <laughs> did he just call me? Did he just call me cute? <laughs> Be still my heart. <laughs> okay, North, right? Let's get out of the puddle area first. And she just grabs okay. your arm again and um, pulls you out of the way, so that we go back north. Gideon. You and Zinnia uh, wait there as Salt, Team, and Blossom come away from this puddle and towards you. You inspect Salt's arm kind of briefly, just at a, at a glance. You don't see any more of that glitter remaining. Your spell did its job. I, I have a little. I do a little gulp and I go, "Thank you, Gideon." Anytime. Um, I'm gonna waddle over because I. I, I drank a health potion a while ago. I'm going to take like a vial of it. Can I inspect before I touch this goop stuff? Would I be able to bottle any of this? Or yeah, you can roll like... an investigation check on it. Oh, heck yeah. Um, do, 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 do. You mean my my 22, my 21 passive investigation won't tell me? <laughs> hey, that's perception. <laughs> no, it's I have passive investigation too. Oh, okay. Uh, it's 21 in passive investigation, 22 for perception. But regardless, that was a 25 I got. <laughs> <laughs> Sauron? I, Do you, I see you. Okay. Yeah. As <laughs> you look down at it uh, as briefly, you just take a small stick, throw it in the puddle. There's leaves all over this thing. You don't think that's going to be a problem. You just kind of take a small stick just to see how solid it is. It uh, kind of bounces up as if this is literally made out of gelatin as you throw the stick on there you might be able to get some in there but it would be more advantageous to cut a piece of it off and you probably have more success with that um yeah with that in mind uh i'm gonna take like just the tiniest sliver off of a corner and just like bottle it and cork it for gideon's not intent 
intending to like use this, but Gideon wants to research this because this is fascinating. And if Gideon can find a more easy cure than expending his highest spell slot, uh, Gideon would like that. Do you have a knife? Uh, I. That's a good question, actually. Do I? Um. I have a letter opener because of my uh my priest kit. <laughs> Do you want to use so, that? Um. Yeah, I'll use a small like knife for that. Gideon doesn't get much mail. <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a fairly unused letter opener. Still pretty polished. What does your letter letter opener look like? Um, I think Gideon has one of those ones that like he got at like a, a gift shop like in some town where it's like a little miniature sword kind of thing in the sheath that's like it looks super ornate and fancy but when he opens it half of the sheath is like just filler space and the actual knife is just this dinky little thing so Gideon's <laughs> doing this like very much a pinch and just like saw motion like above this to not touch the gelatin um, beautiful but I think Gideon's got steady enough hands to give it a go right uh, yeah, so uh, like a cake, uh, you stick your knife uh, down into uh, it to basically cut a small corner of it out to pour it into a uh, little vial for research later. All of you are just kind of waiting for Gideon to do his thing. Gideon. Yeah. Tell me a deck save. I don't have inspiration. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Gideon got a whole three with a plus one on a deck save. Oh, actually, cr change. That is a strength save. That's my bad. Gideon's got a one. <laughs> it's negative one deck save. Beautiful. First strength save. Right. As you stick your letter opener in this thing, you hear the sound of like a bunch of bubbles immediately start forming as Blossom. You think, God, mm, uh, as I thought he was just going to look at it before Gideon suddenly this kind of thick liquid slams into your arm and pulls you down into the puddle as oh. you are dragged down into this pool here. All of you look over Gideon. You're going to take 13 bludgeoning damage. As Absolutely suddenly radical. you feel your lungs get pushed against as just the sheer force uh, of the water that is inside this thing begins pulling down on you. Uh, you are trying to wrangle your way out of this, but you just feel like you're restrained and you try and breathe in, but you just <clears throat> there's only water, thick, thick water around you as you're uh, you try to, but you are currently out of breath. You all see I'm, him down in the pool. I'm, what are you doing? I'm trying to pull him out. Okay. All of you are running over there. Uh, are you going to reach your hands in to grab in and pull him out? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you do so, your hands touch the uh, ooze itself. I need you to make a strength save. 19. 19. Sounds good. Uh, it tries to pull you in, but you pull yourself away. You're unable to get down deep enough to be able to grab Gideon, but you are able to resist this thing pulling you. You pull your arms away as you feel that this thing is sentient. As it pulls its way up, a form of this like jelly-like monster glowing in this bright glitter like what was going up your arm salt forms and moves its way around as what... Mm, let's see... Everybody actually can roll me an arcana check on this. Ow. An eight. Eight. Eight as well. Eight. Nineteen from the from the rat. A two. A two. Natural twenty from the inside of this stupid thing. <laughs> so twenty-three. Uh salt. This looks a lot like the water elementals you've used in Circus, but this one's all glittery. As Gideon, you realize, this water elemental is thick with three Cs. What the fuck? As all of you uh, roll an initiative check. Uh, we're not going to use the actual um, roll 20 on this one since you are all surrounding this thing in its singular spot. This thing is just pouring itself out of this brightly pink and green puddle here, wobbling itself around. Uh, so, yeah, let's get those initiative checks from everybody. 22! 22! 22! 22 from Blossom. What, who has what on the deck scores? Who's higher? I got a plus Two. three. Okay, so Please. we're going to go to team. 
Lim Blossom. Jackie? Eight. Eight. Ooh. That's good. You're a cleric. Gideon? Um, I got a two, but I can add my wisdom. Uh, so that would be three. So that would be seven. Seven. Okay, Gideon. Salt? Seventeen. Seventeen. Ooh. Right. So, as all of you see this thing floating up around you, you see Gideon kind of struggling for breath inside there, trying to move, but unable to really move its hand around, seeming to be restrained by this big thing. Uh, inside of it is just so much reflectivity. It's hard to really see Gideon inside there. It's like trying to look at something inside of a mica powder filled dice. We should all know what that's like. First up is team. You see your friend floating in the chest cavity of this moving elemental like creature. I'm a swing twice at it with my side. Do it. But I'm going to swing at it lower than where I see Gideon probably is. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Because I don't want to hit my boy. Where's Robert when you need him? That's two 16s and then that's plus four. So that's two 20s. Two 20s, both hit. All right. Ba -da -da. Ba -ba. Plus one. Uh, so that's going to be a 12 slashing and then a 9 slashing. 12 and then 9 on the slashing. Great. As you take your scythe, trying to cut as much of this thing, you're basically trying to cut the bottom half and have this thing tip over. Uh, and as you do so, you get two solid hits, what would have absolutely cleaved a man in half with your scythe and the sharpness of it. But this thing seems to just kind of poof, almost reform itself as you swipe some of this thick water away. It slams back down onto itself, seeming to do less damage than you originally anticipated from this thing. If, if I see that, uh, I would like to use my bonus action to put my scythe back and pull out my plus one short sword. Sounds good. You stow it, pull out your next one. You of pull it out your shield. shield. That's kind of yeah. what I figured. Great. As you pull it up, ready to go and defend yourself around the edge of this water elemental. All of you are currently around the ring. Uh, since we're not showing a map or anything on this one, if you feel like you want to be further away, you have to tell me, hey, I'm going to move out of, you know, a central melee with this thing. But next is going to go to Blossom. Um, It's about how wide is it again? Because if he's in the, if Gideon's in the center, I want to do a move that will hit the hit the elemental, but not hit him exactly. Depends what spell you're doing. If you're doing a targeted spell, you'd probably be able to hit him. An area one, that's going to be a little risky. Okay. Um, I want to call lightning down on it, but I want to call it in a way that it doesn't hit Gideon, if that makes sense. So this creature's body is close to the edge where all of you are. This thing is fairly large it's a big creature it's maybe about you know 10 feet wide 20 feet tall but there's a 40 foot pool here it's water you know it to be water just very thick you could shock the other side but it'd be a risky shock with the lightning to see if you hit gideon or not mm. well it has 120 feet so i want to do it on the opposite side of it great um yeah, so it's 10 feet with a 60-foot radius, so I want to put it somewhere where it's kind of, like, away from us. Not shocking you um, Not shocking us, and trying not to shock Gideon. Okay. And they must have, they can make dexterity saving throws. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so, if you're going to do call lightning Gideon, you're restrained, so you have disadvantage on this dex saving throw. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage on your Call Lightning as you begin to channel above Zania what you recognize to be Call Lightning. However, these storm clouds above you are a bright, bright blue, almost pastel -y blue in the sky as if someone painted them up there uh, in these fey-like clouds. The lightning itself is this red, you would be very jealous of this bright, bright red lightning that shocks down into the pool of water here. Um, so I got 16 points of damage. Okay. Gideon? What it is. Shout out to the two crew. Oh, no. Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, right. As uh, 
you call down red lightning cracking down uh, on this elemental. You hear as some of the water begins to turn to steam as your lightning strikes it. It is a solid strike, but you can see the lightning rod that allowed it to strike is the lightning bolt stuck right into Gideon as he kind of fries uh, on the inside of the sting, taking 16 (laughs) points of lightning damage. No bueno for Gideon. Uh, Anything else that you're doing on your turn? Um... No, that's what I'll, I'll do for now, because that was my action, and I can't really do anything else with my bonus. So I'll just um, kind of stay where I am. Okay, sounds good. Uh, it's going to go to your turn, Salt. Be- okay. Oh, you would have actually automatically you- failed that deck saving throw, by the way, uh, Gideon. Just FYI, I just you sent you staying. a super secret message, Ryan. Ooh, okay, super secret message. Do, 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 do. Two seconds, everybody. No, not yet. Okay, cool. Um, I will pull out my new dagger as and double stab it. I'll stab with the dagger, and then I'll stab with the tail. As you have spent time resting, during your resting time, you said you just kind of zonked out. Have you been spending any time with this dagger to where you'd be attuned yes. to it yet? I, I should have. You were stabbing uh, and practicing sure with it on the way back. I remember that. I'm sure I messaged you saying that yesterday when we were walking. And gotcha. today I'd be playing with it. Sounds good. We'll call that good. We'll say that you're attuned to it. As such, go ahead uh, and roll. It is a plus one dagger, so you can add that to your hit and damage when you calculate this stuff. Go ahead and roll the hit. All right. The dagger hit is 15 plus 7 now, so 22 to hit. 22 definitely hits. All right. It'll be 7 in damages. 7 as... You stab with this pumpkin carving knife, the hollow carver. You slice into it and pull upwards, creating a huge gash that goes up along the front of this thing. This thing slices so smoothly. You are so happy uh, with using this thing. And as you do so, a bright beam of light slices upwards and this huge, immaculate, pearly white light, reminiscent of what you saw on the inside of the pumpkin that you defeated, shines out from the scar along this water-like elemental. You pull your arm back with eyes wide. Slice and dice. Um, and that's amazing. And while I'm kind of slightly distracted, my tail will go for a hit as well. Go for it. Go ahead and roll the hit. Okay. That's another good roll. So 21. Does it. All right, and can I sneak an elemental? Probably not, not from where you're at. Uh, your swashbuckler feature may come into play here. I was going to say, I'm within five feet of it. Yeah, everyone else. <laughs> Gideon, I I'm think, within is within five feet, five feet of it. Sure, so <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm well, doing I mean, a sneak attack. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was also still probably right next to Salt as we were walking back, I think, when Gideon started cutting into this elemental yeah you're all right right up on it fighting currently trying to save your friend 18 damages it is 18 sounds good your tail very much like trying to hit through the brain of this face thing you jump up as high as you can and allow your tail to slice through as it does so it doesn't quite connect as well as you would have liked for it to you you really thought you had the jump on it there but your tail is just not connecting as well as the dagger seemed to have I internally say, ha! And that's my turn. (laughs) As you slam back down on the ground, uh, it's going to go to its turn. Uh, As such, let me make sure one thing, if you need to do this on your turn or on its turn. Ah, I do need you to make a... uh, Oh, no. Actually, uh, you are just... Gonna take bludgeoning damage. That's another thirteen points of bludgeoning damage going to you. Cool, Gideon's down. Shoot, Gideon struggling against this thing suddenly begins to fall limp. You all realize getting Gideon out of this elemental creature is priority number one at this point, uh, as it's going to rear its water-like hands up and slam down once against uh, Salt for hitting it so hard, and then once against. Yeah, we'll go with Blossom, since she also shocked it real good. 
That is do -do -do salt. That is exactly what it needs. And then uh, it also hits you, Blossom. Uh, so that is... Do -do -do oh, it doesn't give me the average here. So we're going to go... I have to actually roll this. Okay. Two seconds. Uh, uh, 11 bludgeoning damage coming to you, Salt and Blossom. I will uncanny dodge it. Okay. That's going to go down to six damage to you. Yep. And then 11 to you, Blossom. Uh, as this thing sits in this pool and it doesn't really move. It just kind of holds its position here. Uh, with Gideon stuck inside it. Zania, it's your turn. You see Gideon begin to lose consciousness. All right. Zania's going to step up, and she's going to uh, put her hands together and kind of make like a big clap and then um, cast Guiding Bolt at second level. Ooh, do it. All right. Roll to hit. Fuck yeah. Sorry. 24 to hit. <laughs> Flim flam, yes. Uh, as you, uh, you pull back your red energy spear, almost like a harpoon as you throw it into the side of this thing. Definitely hits. Uh, roll your damage. Yes. Six plus six plus six, 18, 23. Oh, one more. And a four. Uh, 18, 20, 27 mm -hmm. points of uh, radiant damage. Did you do it at a higher level? Second level. Okay, I was like, that's yes. impossible. <laughs> that Second. was a high roll. How, ma how many? It was, Satan, it's, is uh, that you? <laughs> it's six, 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 five, four. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, 27? Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, as you're, you pull your guiding bolt back, as you slam it into the side of this elemental creature, the whole glittery appearance of it begins to shine even brighter no no longer pink and green is just a solid red with a white scar where uh salt stabbed into it uh remains all of you think i can definitely hit this thing now uh, as you see gideon gideon pretend you're a pokemon right now where it's blinking red in front of you because you have low health <laughs> doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> as this element surrounds you uh what else are you doing zinnia uh that's all i can do that's all i can do Great. Um, how did it look? Oh, uh, it, it that. definitely took a lot of damage there. No, no problems. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right. Uh, is it's gonna go to Gideon? Gideon, I need you to make a death saving throw. I feel yeah. like that's all we got you on the show to do, and I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a okay. That's a one. The oh. Gideon takes two death fails. Gideon struggles and. <laughs> You see him struggle to catch any breath. He seems to breathe in some of the liquid around him. Blossom, you recognize how bad that is. It's okay, guys. I'll come back as PD Piranha from Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be my next character. <laughs> I'll just flap around and go, ah! <laughs> Not so Oh, you're like, Gorf. I'll bless him now. Right. <laughs> Uh, so God. we have team, then blossom, then salt before its turn. So team, it's your go. So team taking a little bit of that electricity from uh, blossom uh, uses a bonus action. He slides the shield down, and red electricity crackles around his shield. Uh, and then he takes his plus one short sword, and he's going to make four attacks using an action surge in there as well. Team is playing an elemental warrior, a custom homebrew class that we have made and that he is playing. So he well, creates a red lightning shield, which looks rad in my head, as you pull your short sword out and begin slicing four times into this thing. Go ahead and roll the hit. Also, not just in your head, it's rad. <laughs> it's just rad. <laughs> All right, that's an 18 plus 7. Hits. That's a 16 plus 7. Hits. That's an 11 plus 7. Hits. And a 5 plus 7, so... Last one does well, not hit. Okay. So 3 hit. I'll take it. A 12 does not hit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no metagaming. Ah, Blossom is the uh, metagame druid. <laughs> uh, it's okay, everybody so thinks it in their head. You just four, said it out loud. So, mm -hmm. 8 slashing on the first with the plus 1. Uh, then a six plus four, so an additional ten. Okay. And then five plus four, so an additional nine. As you 
with a fury to save your friend, just basically with the side of your sword, try and swat as much water away as you can. You slice into it and then turn your sword midway through, trying to pull water off of this thing, slashing as best you can. A lot of the goop uh, and the glitter goes flying. Matter of fact, roll one more d20 for me. Let me know if it's a crit. Uh, it's a 19. No, okay. You had the guiding bolt. I just had to see if uh, that did help you with the crit since uh, Zinnia did give the guiding bolt in there. Just had to check uh, since you did hit with the first one. No worries. Um, as you slice into that, uh, it loses its red color uh, as you pull your sword back. It's less enormous than it once was. I wouldn't say bloodied, but not quite as imposing uh, as it goes down to your turn, Blossom. Uh, it's bloody. Can I use... Can I use the last of my movement to, like, literally get up in this thing's face as close as I can? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You get right to the edge of the pond, uh, enough to where you're almost teetering and worried that you're going to fall into it. Yeah. Right. Um, as it goes to your turn, Blossom. Blossom feeling really bad about the um, lightning bolt in the first place hitting Gideon. Um, she's going to cast Healing Word at third level at Gideon Ooh. to try and get him up and give him some HP. I like it. How much are you healing for? Um, da, 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 da. Can I hear while inside Nine. of this thing? Because this is my concern with my spells is I can't speak or move. Go ahead and oh. uh, roll a perception check. Oh, God. He gets 13 Scream HP. Blossom. Scream, Blossom. <laughs> 13 HP. Yeah. A plus seven on perception. I got a ten. Ten. It sounds like you're in the middle of a pond, and your mom's yelling at you. Hey, come on! <laughs> it's time to it's time to come back. As if you're stuck under the pond. You don't want to come back. It's swim time. But okay. But you you hear like through the water uh, before you you see your mom reach up for you, uh, mama's boy. Uh, that you are. You're like. Mom, uh, as you suddenly find yourself back inside this thing, some of the water currently filling your mouth. You cannot speak, breathe, or move but as you're trying your best to get out of here. Blossom, anything else you're doing? Um, and because that was like a bonus action, I'm just gonna try and hit it with my quarter stuff. Um, Do it once. So I did heal though. Just double checking. Yeah, What's thirteen. Up? I did heal the yeah, points. Yeah, you did heal. Okay, just double checking. Um, so I got a nineteen to hit. Definitely hits. Um, and then at six budgeting damage. Six budgeting. You take your quarter staff. You've seen these things before. You try and hit it. It does hit and connect. You splash some of the water away, but it's just not as good of a hit as you would like for it to be. It's it's mm -hmm. this thing is liquid. You're not exactly sure where you should hit this thing with a plain old quarter staff, but still helps every little bit. Uh, unless you're moving, it's going to go to salt. No, I'll stay where I am. I want to keep my eyes on Gideon. <laughs> Sounds good. Salt, it's your turn. Okay, okay, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll, let's do it. So, uh, Salt, uh, tail comes around, gets around his hand with the dagger. He jumps up in the air and goes, The Stratosphere Tail Spear! And the dagger and, and tail go in together, um, meaning that I'm going to use my uh, sneak attack on the dagger attack. Ah, I like it. Okay, so go ahead and roll for the dagger first. So, 16 plus 7 now. 23. 23 hits. And then roll the tail to see if it hits too. And the tail is 15 plus 6, 21. Boom, both hit. Go ahead and roll the damage for the dagger. All right. 3, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, 14 damages. 14. Uh, as you slice into it across where you made the first one, a sudden plus symbol or cross of light <sighs> emanates out from this thing. Brilliant white pearlescent light. You, you look at your dagger like, okay, your turn as you let the tail <laughs> slice into it, knowing it's not going to hit quite as strong as you. Uh, how much damage from there? The tail will do... Um, so 10 damages 10 damage again not quite as much as you'd like for it to do as you kind of uh smile knowing you did a great cut with this thing creating a cross of light in front of it uh anything else you're doing um landing back down ready to continue my assault 
Beautiful. Right. So, all four of you that are currently fighting this thing, which two of you are on the left and which two of you are on the right? Where are we, Sarah? Right. Teams on the right? Oh, you ask me. Well, if teams on the right, we would probably be on. Oh, uh, we were walking towards him, so we'd probably also be on the right. I don't know. Blossom and team are on the right. Zania and Salt are on the left. Right. Chat says right. So as this elemental creature pulls its way out of the water, first thing that happens is Gideon, you try and pull your way out, but the pressure inside this thing builds. I'm going to be a nice boy, uh, as 13 is the average damage you should take, uh, but I'm going to roll for it to see if you actually take that. It could be higher. It could be lower. Fair. You take 14 damage as Gideon... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just Ryan hates Gideon. I swear, I tried to, I tried to help and be even better. <laughs> nah. It's okay. My next character is going to be a divination wizard halfling. With the <laughs> just to get the first I hate you. every day. I He's hate like, you. Nope. Nope. I cast I polymorph though, so that I look. I cast disguise self so that I look like a uh, <laughs> tabaxi, but I have all the features of a halfling. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, oh, yeah, I could go back to the Tabaxi Rogue, guys. Oh, hate, well, it's been great having uh, Jakey Boy on here. Love having him on the stream. I did swear on Gideon, and honestly, all of this checks out right now. Yeah. <laughs> As you begin to fall unconscious, this thing occupies the same space as Blossom and Team. Team, you're ready to fight this thing, trying to look imposing, but it seems to just walk in you and envelop you and Blossom. Blossom, I need you and team to both make strength saves. <laughs> Sefi's face is so good. Three. Three? Oh, nice. I got a five. Five. Let's go. Beautiful. Right. So, being that it thinks... Uh, Jakey, we're going to join you. <laughs> Gideon is... Dying doesn't really need to help Gideon anymore. Gideon, you get spit out from the center of it. It ejects you <laughs> like batteries out of it. It just poof, you go flying about ten feet away from it and land onto the ground. Before team, you pull your sword back to strike and blossom. You ready some magic before you both find yourself suddenly floating inside this thing as you feel the pressure begin to push down on you. You both take thirteen points of bludgeoning damage. You are restrained and you cannot breathe. We're going to go down to Zania's turn. Zania, you see them get lifted up inside this elemental creature and Jakey poof, get spat out onto the ground. Jakey not looking very good. She's going to run over to Jake. Gideon. Gideon. And, um, Gideon. Gideon. And she's uh, seen this before and she's just going to run and just touch him and cast Cure Wounds at first level. Oh, how much do you heal him for? Where are my D8s? Oh, there. Yeah, seven, ten points of healing. Gideon, again, you're laying in your bed. You don't want to wake up for school. It's too early before you he hear your mom pat you on the shoulder and be like, honey, when you wake up, it's time before you, uh, your eyes fill uh, back uh, with your normal vision as you see Zania uh, reaching over you. That's not mom. Ah, as you wake up with a lot of adrenaline uh, as you heal for 10 hit points. Zania, anything else you're doing? Uh, um, we got to help them now. I'm just going to go back and be just going to be within five feet of the elemental on purpose. Ah, sounds good. Gideon, you sit there. Uh, sitting up. It is your turn. Um... Gideon gets up and his eyes are a little glossy uh, as he is just so dazed from being in and out. Um, and Gideon rises, standing up, hovers for a moment, and outstretches his hand and says, Die. And he casts a third level guiding bolt. Do it. Go ahead and roll uh, the hit. That's my boy. That's a natural 20. Oh. Hey. Hmm. <gasps> Roll me those 12d6, my dude. Oh my Holy God. moly. Uh, How fitting is it, though, for right, him to... Right. It misses and hits the team. <laughs> Hold on, let me roll for that. Uh, <laughs> Three, 
I, I got a GFY, right? <laughs> Six. Six. Bobo, you roll so well, it develops nuts for you to kick. <laughs> <laughs> Bobo, you can have an inspo. I don't know what you're going to use it on, but you can have one. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Uh, that's, that's math. That's what that is. That's 32. math. 37, uh, that's 45, uh, <laughs> 50, 57, unless my math is off, 57 radiant damage. How many sixes did you roll? Holy crap. 12. Okay. No, I mean, <laughs> how many oh, sixes? Because uh, oh, wait, the max you should be able to get is 72. That's a good roll. Yeah, that's... That's the math right there. Or oh, wait. Go. Cool. Works for me. I'll, I trust. Uh, as Gideon, you, everyone Holy runs up. shit. <laughs> Zania, you're like, we have to help them. You run up. Salt, you're slicing into it, rushing away. Team, you feel the lung, or the air leave your lungs blossom. You feel yourself being crushed by the pressure of this thing. Gideon, nearly in slow motion. Actually, actually in slow motion, being that you're a time cleric. You walk forward, very superhero style. Describe the look of your guiding bolt once more. Um, Gideon, the last time he used it, made those different prisms of just like reality that form around him in the circle, and that energy like basically focuses on his hand and channels forward. Um, this time Gideon just rises and is hovering, and his hand passes through a barrier, and on the other side there is like a more withered version of Gideon's hand, be it from the future or whatever, what have you, and that comes from an almost like a different time of Gideon, just unbridled rage fires forward. As very Doctor Strange, this bunch of glass that you reach response. your hands through, an old, grayed, withered hand of Gideon reaches through this other dimension. You all turn back and look as Gideon's hand opens up a hole in the center of his hands. Black and purple tendrils reach out and slam into the side of this elemental, pulling it towards Gideon's hand with the hole towards it. You hear a screech from this elemental, which you thought not to have any sort of voice as it gets pulled forwards. The tendrils themselves almost act like barricades as it's pushing you away, team, and Blossom, and pulling this element forward. The element tries to turn into a puddle of water in front of it, but the tendrils pull itself and scoop the very earth beneath it up as it sinks into his withered hand before Gideon pulls his hand back through and the glass begins to fade. Um... Before the glass fully fades, Gideon looks through, like, one of them, looking directly at the elemental. And in deep speech, Gideon says, You will suffer endlessly. Does anyone speak deep speech? No. It's not, like, under common, is it? No. No, okay. that's just terrifying. You all hear what very much sounds like Gandalf speaking the words of Mordor. It sounds deep and rumbling. Just... <laughs> before Gideon floats back down as the glass fades away. As Gideon pulls his hand back. Gideon, it feels hot in your hand before you kind of do the shake off. <clears throat> Team, you and Blossom fall <clears throat> spitting out some of the water that was in your mouth. Soaked and covered in glitter. This glitter doesn't appear to be moving like it quite was on salt as you look back over at Gideon standing there before he floats down to the ground looking at his hand. I fucking hate this place. You Zinia. live here? <laughs> <laughs> Looks down at you, Blossom. He's wet. Looks down at you. You live here? <laughs> How's yeah, but we don't touch the puddle. This place still sucks. I um, Is there anything left of the water elemental? There is a puddle in the center but it seems to be like the glitter itself is floating on top of the water it once was a part of this water here now it seems to just be remnants of what once was in there as if you threw a bunch I'll, of glitter uh, on water I'll pop it in a vial and go hand it over to Gideon 
make that two vials, but no one sees a second vial. <laughs> roll a, uh, oh, roll, actually, I will roll you a stealth. Thank you. Okay, yeah, you get your second vial, no problem. Uh, you boom, drink one vial over. As you hand it over to Gideon, Gideon, you look back at Salt, and with your passive perception, you see something in the puddle and in the water. It looks to be a silhouette of a body down inside the water. As Salt hands you a vial of what you were looking for before. Um, looking at it and like generally getting a feel like now that this stuff is in my lungs, do I have a feeling that now that this thing is dead slash destroyed, like do I feel okay or do I feel like I'm in I'm in danger? <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be fine. You think. As long as you destroy the source, you should have no problem here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go investigate the the body I see. Um, Salt also, remember, uh, he hands you the vial, too. Oh, yeah. I uh, I take the vial, um, look at it. Um, thank you. I don't know if me trying to get this was worth it, so I'm... Uh, he kind of looks at everyone and goes, I'm sorry. Uh, and he's going to go investigate the body. As Gideon kind of dejected, you all are like, what are you sorry about? You saved the day. Uh, as Gideon walks over to the edge of the water, you look down uh, and you can see what appears to be like a bony hand inside the water with a jacket connected to it. The glitter is kind of covering the rest. You can pull it out if you'd like. Otherwise, it rests in this watery grave. At this point, I think Gideon, like, if, if there's another elemental under the elemental, Gideon's going to risk it, and he's going to try and get this jacket. <laughs> I need you to roll. Can, I'm just kidding. Can uh, I see Gideon do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you see him over there. You know, now that this thing is out of there, this is what you were worried about, and it's gone, supposedly, so it should be okay. Um, I'm just going to go up next to him and kind of just watch what he's doing just to make sure... Nothing like um, when Salt first slapped it happens again. Gideon, you reach in and you you grab the arm of this thing. It's heavy because it's filled with this water as you pull it up. But this is the bones of someone who is... <clears throat> you pull it out uh, and onto the ground here. As you, you take a look. You throw this jacket out and down. Roll me an investigation. Investigation is a... I think it's plus six, so that's a 16. 16. As you flip this thing over, you can see it's got a human-like jaw as it is unhinged there, still kind of stuck. Whatever this creature was inside there has definitely eaten away at whatever skin or flesh this thing had a long long time ago you search the jacket trying to find anything of value identification something like that but when you reach your hand inside the pocket you feel something sharp as you kind of pull your hand away uh, as you take a look there it's a silver a a silver witch sorry silver a an adventurer's guild pin oh uh i'm gonna fling the pin like over my shoulder kind of thing to between like team Zinia and Salt because I know they'll know the most about it and I'm just going to keep looking seeing if this individual had anything else sounds good you th throw the uh, pin down uh, onto the ground you all see it kind of land in the grass nearby uh, as you continue to search through here as you do so there are a few uh, coins that did not dissolve in whatever this was it seems non- skin like uh, things do not dissolve in here there's a small pouch uh, of five platinum and 25 gold dang solid find um gideon's gonna grab that and get up uh and uh hmm. yeah you know what uh he's gonna just like kind of bundle it in a pouch and then he's just gonna drop it in team's hands and he's gonna start walking north um, put it in your pocket. 
Seems gonna look at his shield and it's still crackling with that electricity and he's gonna put his hand on it and get the electricity in his hand and just discharge it into the ground and then you put a shield on those back throw it kind of That's in the ground cool. and then put his sword back in and just hold this he's gonna look back up at Gideon and be like what? Where, where, where are you going? <laughs> We have to go north. There's yeah, I'm going to follow back up after Gideon and just walk by his side. And um, I just want to turn to him and I go, what you did at the end was pretty cool. Um, I'm kind of sorry about shocking you. Didn't think that was going to happen. It's fine. And she kind of just, yeah. Um, I'll skip past team and my tail will pick up the pouch. And unless he tries to stop me and pop it away, because... The rats are usually the ones holding on to the money bottles and things. Right. As you... Um, I'm going to ask, uh, is everyone okay? Anyone feeling hurt at all that could use my help? Uh, uh kind of, but we could keep going. Here, here. I walk over, I give her a hug, and I cast Cure Wounds. And... Like a hug. And nine points of healing to you, hmm. and then I'll give another yeah. hug. I'll give a hug. I got a crouch down for both of them, and I'm gonna hug Salt. Another cure wounds. Seven points of healing. Anyone else want to hug? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just holding this bag of money that I was just given. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Usually, Gideon. Summer holds my money. No, that's what I think. I grabbed it with my tail, unless you stop me. Oh, okay, then. I, think I, I just that. look at my empty hand. Yeah. <laughs> I know you like hugs, Gideon. How are you feeling? Would you I'm like not... a hug? I'm not feeling for a hug right now, thank you. Okay. Would you like a high five? I'm I'm fine. We should, we should keep moving. Gideon. But you don't look fine. In your head. You look down at the vial that Salt gave you, and you just think, get rid of this. I don't need this. Pour it back in the water. Also, uh, sorry, where's the pin? The silver pin? Team has it currently. Or no, you give it back to Salt? Um, I'll hold on to it, unless Team wants to hold on to it. Yeah, I'll hold, I'll hold on to the pin. Gideon, you you hear that and you th you think about it. You don't have to do it, but you do think. I don't need this. Why did Saul give me this? I think Gideon um, Gideon tapes a label onto it that he tries to like write basically out of view of others, um, and then he just like puts it in his bag. Um, but like as it puts in uh, the the. The, the vial is just labeled. It just says a reminder. Gideon, you label it, put it in your pocket, and I think that's a great place to stop for the night. I thought it was very fun. Thank you all for joining. <laughs> and Safi, what an awesome oh, character boy. Blossom turned out to be. So adorable. <laughs> oh, Blossom's too wholesome. Right? This uh, is going to be a great campaign. Every episode. <laughs> every episode, Gideon, Gideon dies. dies. <laughs> <laughs> In the movie the experience and then <laughs> used he to be rocks the shit out of <laughs> <laughs> a guiding bolt <laughs> That's yeah a salt you've just passed the dying mantle feels good right oh no, i want to i want to discover the seven the seven colors of life <laughs> well hey you just got to die in and come this back. group i'm the only one that's actually died <laughs> <laughs> uh, chat has been asking just, um... Bobo's 10 GFY thing uh, of the bad thing that happens because Bobo got up to 10 GFYs has yes. happened. I won't say what it Summer's is or what dead. it was I mean, until what? later, but it absolutely has happened. So once it comes a little bit more into play and we're a little past it, I will gladly tell you. But for the time being, it has happened. I'm with chat. It's Ada. You did something to Ada, and I'm going to have to I'm gonna, I'm gonna find you. I'm going to drive up. Where he lived. Yeah, yeah. Otta's Otta back. No Otta's got skin. Otta's heckin' wholesome. Right. It's not Otta, though. <laughs> it's not Otta. <laughs> Otta comes back and does a Miss Piggy voice instead of Kermit. 
would die. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go ahead and do the giveaway if you can knock that one out for us, team. All right, if you want to enter it in, there's 97 people and only 81 tickets, so do it. Exclamation mark, blood. Give it like 30 more seconds. Six of us need to it. Oh, hopefully it's not broke. I don't know. Do it. See, Stream Chug. lab seems to be working. I don't know. Let's, huh? let's go to track. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. If anything, <laughs> it's Bobo's fault for the 10 GFYs. Oh, see, no, it's still working because Ribomom just entered. <laughs> I'm going to make yeah. an NPC with Ribomom. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> You've called it's just it's Gideon's happen. mom. <laughs> Rival mom, come on and play my mom in D and D, please. Oh, that would be so wholesome. We'll make it happen. <laughs> All right, I am closing entries in ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on. Rockefeller Center. <laughs> Everyone just wants right. Rival Mom to win it. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Windows shut down sound .exe. <laughs> <laughs> All of us back out so Ribomom wins. <laughs> reset it. No one's put anything in. Uh oh. Oh, that's true. Failed. Okay, I'm it, won't, oh, true. it won't let me pick a winner. Oh, oh, true. I feel like this happens to Bree, too. Bree! This happens to Bree, too. She's always like, uh oh, hold on. <laughs> She's there telling you you can do it. <laughs> you can do it, Drew. Bree! You can do it. Thank goodness, Bree. I broke it, it. I don't want to hit cancel because if I do that, it's going to wipe everything. I just have a feeling. Yeah. So... <laughs> wins by default. Right. The universe has <laughs> spoken. Give it to Rival Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Bree, I'm coming to fix your problems, Drew. Sorry, Bree. Look, if you win and you want to give it to Rival Mom, you can do that. Hey, there we go. Hey, it's Agent Lady Hawkeye. I like it. Hey. Beautiful. Uh, so, what did you do, Bree? Brief it. Just push the button. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Agent <laughs> Lady Hawkeye. Uh, Agent 80 Hawkeye. What did I say? Agent Lady Hawkeye. What did I say? Agent Lady Hawkeye. Oh, Agent 80, dog, hey. <laughs> I know that you're on Discord, so message me on Discord sometime, uh, and we'll figure out a time where you and I can talk, uh, and we'll get you a NPC created and uh, go from there. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and if, uh, yeah, we'll, whatever you want to do, we'll make it happen. So. Excited to do that. Thanks for everybody uh, sticking with us tonight on our new uh, location with level up underscore TTV. Thanks. Uh, this was a great session. And thank you again, Safi, for joining us. The face behind the arts, the wonderful Safi Chan. Safi! 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 Awesome. And if you want, uh, go check out Draw with Safi Sundays from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I was mm -hmm. on there last time and we made think... Ripped Keenak. I think one of the cast members on stream tonight is going to be on there next Sunday. Wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> maybe. Oh, maybe. Is that, I have to be confirmed. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Someone always is, so we'll see you there on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic night. And thank you again, Safi. It was awesome having you. Yee. Bye. 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 Bye.